with, um, let's see, it's called the sort of hybrid special meeting of uh, Hyde Park Select Board to order it. Yeah, it's close enough to six o'clock on October 6th. Um, the main thing we're talking about tonight is thought it'd be easier to just have a separate meeting to talk about financing. And with this, uh, with the ARPA money as well, we have an opportunity to get us all sort of educated on that and see about starting to make at least a few small commitments of the money that we, that we have. So, everybody, welcome. Ron, do we have anybody besides here? No, that's it. Um, that's just, yeah. Okay, we need any changes to the agenda? Looks like, you barely see that. Caller number one is not naming themselves, but we have one guest online. <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh, gee, would be gas time. Yeah. Yeah. CO, CO, oh, caller CO. one, caller one. Okay. Uh, GMA, G is the uh, public access. Gym. Oh, green mountain access. Okay, gotcha. Ron, it's Kim's on the line. Okay, oh, hey there, Kim. Kim. Um, any comment from the public? Are you here to learn about ARPA funds too? Okay. Um, first. Um, uh, Kim, is there anything you want to add or you're here for our ARPA funds too? Yeah, I'm here for the whole thing. Okay. Thank you. Um, we have the, uh, the, the, uh, the design for the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail Trail Pen. <laughs> Get all those words in there. Um, uh, He's done that. It's really nice. It really, it really looks great. I've been um, able to go through the whole process. And what we need to do is to um, formally accept his design, which at the public meeting and the feedback is everybody really likes it. And then we go start looking to uh, to raise the money to actually do the project. And we already have a line on on several good grants, but this is something that will be um done through grants or private fundraising and not asking taxpayers to put any money into it so whenever we get the money raised we'll do it what are these um little pictures here made of what are they just painted on there you know, ron can you do yeah oh, no yeah those are uh, painted images mm -hmm. broken down from one big painting so they can chop it into oh. four pieces mm -hmm. and then they sandwich it between some bulletproof glass and come up with a way to make that all happen don't ask me um because we've seen a couple of his of his other works have been around for some time and they are uh, pretty indestructible do we know what the design. height of this is in here over eight yeah. over eight good yeah we're trying to yeah. keep the um People from hanging on it, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Keep as much not a toy or playground piece of equipment as an art as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Good. So I guess what I need is a motion to accept his proposal. So moved. Second. Okay. Need any more conversation about it? It's the um, Ron. You've connected it, so you can check it out on on the town website. You right. See it roll. I can't download nothing. No, this is not, this is on the, on the website. Can, yeah, it's on it's on the website. You go sometime and see his presentation. He's um, um he's been really fun to work with, and I look forward to to continuing with this project because he's uh, he really gets into it, and he's talked to lots of people in town and gotten lots of good uh, pictures and lots of good ideas, um, and he loves working with schools and kids. So it's got the kids all involved. So that's all going to be fundraising and yeah. grants. Yeah, the grants. Yeah. Very. It's going to be probably close to sixty thousand dollars by the time we get through with it. Wow. And we got a pretty good lead on a thirty thousand dollar grant already. Okay. So. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's <laughs> well, they can volunteer some. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> Donate to the fundraising. That's, that's right. Wow, the um, just the fundraising made me think. This is obviously a great spot for 
for the variety of kids programs that do bottle drives. Oh my goodness, every time I come down here with bottles when they're doing a bottle drive down here, it's like. It's my my really son's is. class, sixth grade class did it here. And we raised like $1,300 on a Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> and we didn't have to do anything. Yeah. The truck from yeah. St. Albans yeah. came exactly. to the Exactly. That's, that's what great is to come and it all gets moving. Yeah. And it just is really amazing. Yeah. It's, a, it's obviously a great spot. So I think having changed that so it's okay for Kim to okay when, you know, when people ask for it because there's no, you know, it's, um, it's, it's terrific. And it's a good way to, for me to get rid of the bottles that I keep wanting to take back. <laughs> Um, oh, let's see. I guess did we vote all in favor of accepting the proposal? Signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Kick off the budget. Okay. So every year we get to October and we talk about the budget and starting to meet with departments and people thinking about current year projects that they're still working on and how that might bleed over sometimes to the next year. So we put a lot of that on department heads to try to figure that out so that when they come to the board, they present something that's pretty well thought out and the board either goes with it or has questions, whatever. So today I've sent out the memo that just said, hey, starting this, it's going to continue through end of January. And if you have things, start talking internally. Liaison role is good for this. So you go yeah. talk to them. Keep about. peppering peppering them about what they want to do with the budget. They can do all sorts of different we don't really direct the process. Some municipalities will tell you exactly how you're supposed to do it. In the past, we've taken these meetings as the way. So we bring them in and they say, here's what we're thinking. It's up or down or same, whatever. Um, or the board will say, well, like you we sort of did with Matt Moore in last meeting with, uh, maybe we don't want to put that in the budget for one $15,000 when you have 8,000 a year budget. Yeah. Let's see if we can get that as a special article. So those are the things that go on between now and January, resulting in a budget and a list of articles for town meeting morning. So we have some issues already that are built in, which are problematic. One is the um, changes in the highway department, uh, union contract and the wages right. have to be funded. <laughs> They're not in the current budget. So you're going to see a big increase in that line of uh, inflation is starting to feel the pinch. We didn't get hit too hard on like winter salt or fuel too bad yet, so that's good. Uh, paving, we didn't get hit too bad. We went out to bid on Hutchins for Fitch Hill and they, they did their cost, uh, they call it asphalt price adjustment, which is really related to inflation. So that original project was bid back in, I almost think it was like November, October 2020. We got pushed and pushed and pushed. Yeah, yeah. We pay based on the cost of that material when it's applied. Oh. So that's the adjustment. So they go back to the market and find a hunk of barrel oil was cost, and they say the difference was 6%. So $79,000 bill for the first layer of Fitch Hill. Without the price adjustment, it would have been 74000 just to give you some idea of the difference. Now, if you bid it and, and apply it, it's, there's gonna be no price adjustment because there's no time to adjust. It's adjusted every month. So basically, if you, if you bid it, uh, here we have almost a year. <clears throat> so anything that you're looking at now, for, especially for construction that you think you can have a handle on now, you can sort of add five or 6% for next year. So that's what the department heads process should be on there to books. Who knows what books are gonna cost for Amy next year? Yeah. You know, with no paper. And if you like get that. them. Yeah, yeah you get one, she can even get, them, yeah. You know, get one out of five that she orders and all that stuff. Yeah. So there could be some service issues where people are just getting more frustrated with lack of materials. We've been paying a lot for steel in particular, for example, not so much other stuff. So really hard to, to do something that's going to start in July of 22. Right. But other than that, I think health care is going to be okay, which is another big driver mm -hmm. along with the wages. And that's all that's about 70 percent of your budget so the 30 percent is already is facing some of those supply and cost increases which in january we'll look at the cpi because that's when the december is published and that's sort of what the board has used on the wages so for the three percent in highway which is fixed for three years the other staff have to be figured out and put a, put a number in there 
So if somebody wanted to do something brand new, it's it's all going to go up, you know, unless somebody in there, I don't see anybody cutting services at this point, but any new services or expanded services, or changes in employee status, all that kind of stuff is always over here. But you have, you have some built-in problems already with trying to get to your, which, which in the past has been a 3% tax rate increase or less. Um, you can't do that right now, even if everybody proposed zero. So I don't know. I don't know how to direct department heads except give us the list. Yeah. We'll talk about it. And in January, the board will have to collectively yeah. make some decisions about where to put the tax rate. Um, ARPA will help, but indirectly, it's not really dealt with the op You can't use it for operating expenses. It doesn't really help your ongoing costs. We don't have water and sewer broadband projects ourselves, which is the three main priorities for ARPA. Um, we have to maybe talk to the fire district yeah. or other people, or Pat Ripley is supposed to log in uh, remotely at 6.30 to talk about where their regional priorities are. And then you can decide to support those or just keep the money so for local projects. There's no there's no restrictions on what you do with it. It just has to be eligible. Well, I know one of the one of the things that we talked about is we've been putting money aside and getting more and more of the town records online. And I'm sure this is near and dear to Kim's heart. Is um, you know which certainly when you, when you look at how much was already online and going to not having people come in the office. It's slowly but surely, it's not just us, but I think everybody is, is turning to so on. Um, most of the records of a town are online and folks can just go online and get the information they need. They don't come into the office anymore. And I think, I know Kim had, I don't remember what the numbers are, but there's a proposal for getting the rest of that information online. I think we ought to look at that. Oh yeah, no, I think that that makes a lot of sense. It's just for for a whole bunch of reasons too, and I think a lot of people have gotten used to doing, you know, more things online than they have than they have in, in the past. Um, so, Susan, yeah, I will say that I'm still waiting for a quote from the company um, to get at, to finish getting us to forty years. Um, yeah. which is the requirement for title searches when people you know, purchase a home. Um, Ron and I talked about you know, potentially also getting a quote just to get everything online. Um, it, I started asking for this ARPA quote beginning of June before I even went on my vacation. And I still don't have it. And the reason is municipalities across the country are asking for the same kind of quotes and they're just in and in it trying to get these quotes out. So yeah. not to mess up my original quote request, but I've also, I've also got on my list of things to do to get a, a request, you know, a quote for literally all of the land records back to book number one. So I don't know what that would be. I'm guessing it's probably about 10 to maybe 12,000 to get us back for a total of 40, 000, or 40 years. Get us back to book one. I think it's probably going to be another. I'm going. I'm guessing forty to fifty thousand total. Gotcha. It's fascinating how it's somehow it's so much more fun to spend money than it is to earn it. <laughs> Um, Ron, what else, what else do we need to, I don't know if we want to sort of start talking well, about it because we're going to, yeah, I mean, I, the budget, other than it being hard on the expense side, the revenues are moving a lot. We had, we did have one of our busier building seasons this past year, almost double of what we had the prior year in 2020 and 2020 was similar to 19 and 18 and 17 going back. Uh, probably six or seven years. So, uh, talked to the village today, and they had a lot of permits as well for redevelopment and reinvestment. So maybe the grand list will be more than the 1.0, 1.2 that we've seen for an increase. But every half a percent that that grand list goes up makes your job getting it to three percent easier. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, you know, 
let's just let's just say we see two and a half percent in the right. past, and we've seen one percent in the grand list. Then you, your five percent budget could be three percent. You know, it's kind of that right. map right. of in and out. Mm -hmm. So what what did, what did we have for access permits this year? Uh, for no, we had uh, new house construction. New what? New house construction was about double last year. So from about six to thirteen, I think maybe we can get a couple more before the end of this year. So we got. 13 this year already. Yeah, I'm pretty much at the end of it. There's a couple stragglers that might come in. Uh, so that's just, and the village, she's, she didn't tell me how many new houses, but I know there's a major renovation and a new house on West Main. There's been porches and decks and the MSI project, which is a major renovation of that. I think they haven't started to invest. I think they've just done cleanup there. So that, that will be a big, Addition to yeah, that was if, if, but that's such a big project; it could be multiple years, you know, right. because it's so many different things pulling at that project. Did Did you? Well, uh, probably the same to spot to talk about. It. Did you talk about that um, foundation up there by the post office? Uh, one with, and we say something about that last time. Uh, Marky, e. yeah, yeah, Marky. E. Yeah, right. we did. We talked about that last time. Well, you see, you know what what he's interested in. In but doing what it, what's what's he interested in selling? He's doesn't seem to be terribly. A couple neighbors just asked me up there, and I couldn't give them my answers. Yeah, them. yeah, and I don't. You know, that's one of those pieces of property. It would it would be. There's several pieces in the village that if somebody left us a half a million dollars, it would be nice to be able to buy and turn into parking. Like, again, that area because, of course, there is the park up there behind it that could be turned into. Or again, I expect if you cleaned it up, that was the house when it was the house that had all the water in the basement, right? Right. And that's, yeah. that's what the people are concerned with with the kids around there, and that's yeah, yeah. Um, you know, kids. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> What's that? Well, it's right there on the corner. Actually. It's a hole in the ground. Right, right, yeah, right there in the corner. Oh, is, is your is your coming in from the roundabout? You know what, Freddie? Left, much across from the from the cemetery. One, oh, two, now. okay, three houses above uh, Freddie's on the right. Yeah. Okay. There's it's just a little corner. I know right. what you're talking about. Okay. No. So we kind of really driven by there. Yeah. yeah, that road was closed all summer, so I've been now. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, Check it out. Yeah, and of course I don't even know what's going to happen with the Fork and Gavel building. You know, that's on the that's on the market. Um, whether he sells it or not, I don't know. But. Yeah, I think all of, there's a lot of municipalities that will assess properties on revenue or market value from their income, or they'll assess. Uh, uh, sales tax. A lot of those municipalities, Philadelphia, for example, lost $1.2 billion due to revenue loss because they're so tied to business. So they're using 100% of their ARPA money as revenue loss. That's one, they have a huge federal government put out this multi page mathematical formula to figure out what your revenue loss was. Ours was inconsequential. It was minor, probably, if we actually looked it into detail, but it's, I don't think it's worth the exercise to try to solve the formula. Right. <laughs> but bigger places are putting, they're not doing any projects. They're just putting right back into their coffers to get out of their, their debt from, you know, a year yeah. of COVID. Wow. So from our perspective, you know, a vacant cafe or a vacant cellar hole doesn't change much from our, right. from our budget, unless we could figure out how to, encourage redevelopment investment there right. in, in structures, you know, new additions or, or building it on Church Street that Roland's talking about. But the reuse of the cafe is negligible on our operations. You know, from a community perspective, it's huge, but from a revenue side, it's not. I just I just wondered if yeah. a couple of neighbors said to me, you know, would the, would the town people have Material to fill that in if Marquee would let them fill it in, you know. I don't know if we could get all the Marquee and see if we could bring him in and talk with him about it or fill that in. 
There's not a foundation there no more. Um, I don't know. I think there is. I, yeah, I think there is all, all around the side. Well, I haven't thought there there yet. You yeah. can't see yeah. it with the knotweed. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's hiding yeah. in the knotweed. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. But last time I knew it was all there. Yeah. There's so holding water. There. Right. It's holding water. Yeah. If it's full of water, ain't going to be much good in the winter. Three winters. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah been it's, it's, it's been there or a couple more. of winters. Well, I'm not sure because of the water issue, does filling it in make any sense, or does that just create a, something underneath it all? Uh, don't do concrete, don't let it rain. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just think that, you know, we're on this subject of building, I think we should reach out to Marquis and have him come in and just see if we could, uh, you know, help the people up there on the street okay. that are concerned about it. Okay, we can do that. Yeah, because we have this contact information. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, even if what? Town Boy said some extra material and he would go along with it. Foundation in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we'll just at least start a conversation with him about right. basically what he wants to do. Maybe, Rod, if you ask him if he wants to, we'll put him on the 16th agenda. Yeah, I haven't checked in with him for a long time. So yeah. His plans were there. Yeah. Yeah, there's something. Oh, I think this is a worker cell. Let's see. Um, is Marty still going up and up? I don't know. He's still Yeah, I haven't, yeah. I haven't seen him. Right now. I didn't know. Like, because I'm that's where. Rode up to the right. My uh, pup band used to live too, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. They yeah. Moved to you can see it out. Yeah. You just tell me. Yeah, yeah, so we'll, yeah. we'll try to pull. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that is a whole different angle, you know, when you're when you're faced with increasing costs and you do have a little bit of grand list growth, there's more that towns can do, but it takes a ton of effort and a whole bunch of uncertainty. So if you said, okay, our mission for the select board is to look at the grand list and try to figure out how to get that up by half a point. Connecting people with tax credits for reinvestment or we're looking at the sewer system up in North Hyde Park where sewer is going to make investment happen, but it's 10 years down the road. Right. So if you don't have anything in the pipeline, which we don't really, we have zoning regulations that have been freed up a little bit, if you want to call it, make it more favorable to people to invest, but we haven't initiated any real investments since Sterling View probably with the partnership there with Wolka to get the park built. Mm. I can't, you know, I can't think of anything oh, that's, that and that was 1988, <laughs> you know, so does, does the select board want to take more initiative and, and say, we're doing all we can. You can't really say that right now. You could do more, but it takes time and energy. I mean, there's lots of, even small zoning projects that somebody wants to do can take years because they're dealing with state permits and funding and everything to before they actually put dollars in you know in you're right there in the old room weren't you <laughs> if you can generate some revenue for it. Yeah. <laughs> i'll get right on it <laughs> i'll get right on it <laughs> and you're right and, so, and sometimes you get just sort of seeing because it doesn't exist it's, it's Making the kind of investments we're talking about doing up in the water district, and it is that's long term, but that's okay, that's what it takes. It's, that's, that's, it's something in you know, yeah. yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's a step forward versus no steps. McMahon is at their last tax break year, too, right? They're, they're, they're full this year coming up for July, yeah, okay, yeah. They made enough off of me, we're doing everything you can to help. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We, we appreciate that one. <laughs> there you go. Um, okay. Um, that would be about time for Pat to jump on. Um, Ron. Hey, everybody. Hey, is that you, Pat? It is, yeah. Hey, Pat, welcome. Thanks for having me. Sorry, I had to call in. I'm out on the road right now. So. That's okay. We're getting, we're all getting good at this, and there's, there's sometimes it's frustrating, but there's a lot of benefit to it too. 
Um, yeah, you can get more things done. So. Yes, exactly right. <laughs> um, Ron, would you remind us how much ARPA money we have? Uh, uh, the, the town will have access to, eventually, when the second payment comes in, 750000 They split it sort of half? Yeah. Right. Half this fall and half in the spring, early summer. Seven hundred fifty. Yeah, yeah, that's the total. So half of that. <laughs> so we have some now, and we'll get the rest five. later. One's later. And they said by late spring. Late spring. <laughs> they didn't say which spring, though. <laughs> right, we have several. <laughs> So June. Um, yeah, they're, are, they're, are, they're pretty good with the first round. It was probably a, about a month later than we, they initially said. So I don't, I, they take it pretty seriously. Yeah. So. Okay, let's have, Pat, why don't, why don't you tell us what you know and we'll see what we know and we'll see what we can figure out together just beginning to, because there, there are a couple of these projects that um, I think we'd like to, um, in particular in North Hyde Park, we'd like to approve and get and get some money out the door right away. The other, we get a, yeah. a, a long list of people, and I, I have found in talking to people, you know, that they hear these astronomical numbers that someplace like Burlington is getting. So you ask people, yeah. and they'll come in with a five hundred thousand dollar project. You go see, see, we are Burlington. We are getting again. At the end, we have access to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's a, that's a lot of money for this community. So it's a you know, it's an yeah. opportunity to do some some good planning and to make some good one-time investments for the for the community. But um, Pat, why don't you? I'm well, and we'll show you. Um, why don't we go? You you were here, so you know us. But Ron's here. Brian Jacket. And Susan Bartlett. Chastity Fayon. Roll Bowie. Susan Bartlett. Right. <clears throat> we have the. Well, I think okay, great. Right. So, so you know we're here. So, what what can you tell us, Pat? Yeah. Well, I can. Uh, well, let me start by saying, and I, I know I've said this to Ron a couple of times already in via email and, and in a couple of our chats, is that in terms of the logistics of the money and the reporting and things of that nature, um, really the Vermont League of Cities and Towns as well as LCPC um, are going to be the folks to provide assistance on that, which I think you're all aware of, but I just wanted to preface anything I had to say um, with that. And, um, you know, LED, LEDC and the Regional Development Center's role in this is certainly to assist in any way we can. Um, it, but really, our role would be to generally look at the economic impact of any projects or spending that are out there and quite frankly encourage you to spend the money in a way that will have an impact on on the local economy both hyper locally and as well as regionally um but, you know that being said the select boards are empowered to spend this money however they so choose within the guidelines that are set forth so you know, I would say if there's ever questions on whether a project fits into the guidelines or any reporting or things of that nature, I would I would refer you to the League of Cities and Towns. Um, so all that being said, I did take a look at the list that um, that you all had created, and I think there was some interest in knowing about potential regional projects that the money could be contributed to. Uh, um, and I'm happy to continue that search. It is my understanding, and you know, I don't know if there's any media present at the meeting tonight. If I if I misspeak here, I, I like I said, I did want to say that the League and City of Towns are really the experts on the details. But it is my understanding you've got at least two years to spend the money down. Um, so that gives a little bit of time for some decision making, which is good. That being said, larger projects will take probably all that time to really make happen. Um, well, what we do at LEDC, uh, the state has asked us to keep a, a regional priority project list. And this is a somewhat new ask out of the state in terms of how it's being handled. What, what they're asking us to come up with over the next year or so is 10 priority pro projects within Lamoille County. And right now we've identified five. And I can give you a sense of what, what those are at and what the costs are. Um, what I will say overarching is looking at them as, as of now, 
I don't know that any of the projects that have been identified thus far are going to necessarily have a direct impact on the town of Hyde Park, um, but I'll let you know what those are moving forward anyway. What I would say is that if the town of Hyde Park has projects that should make their way onto this priority list, that we should make sure we do that um, in the coming months. And there's a process to that that I can help you with. There's some paperwork, Ron and I could probably work through it. Um, so all that being said, I'll just list off the five we have now. The hope is to get at least five more, possibly more than that. The state has put forth a scoring matrix, matrix for these projects to determine which will get a higher priority. Um, one of the main, there's a handful of things, but the main items that kind of help projects score higher are job creation being one. That's kind of the big, big one. Um, and another large one would be prior investment in the project. So let's say, I'll give you an example of one of them that's on the list. The I'm not sure if you all have heard of the light industrial park land in Johnson. Um, it's yeah. been discussed. Some, Sometimes it makes its way into the, the local papers. Um, they they purchased the property some years ago. I think it was around 200000 something of that nature for the purchase. We helped with a feasibility study. So there's some prior investment there. And now what they're looking to do is to develop that property into sellable industrial or rentable or sellable. I'm not sure exactly what direction they're leading at the moment. Um, industrial property. So you can sense how that would bring jobs to the area, help the overall economy as well. The last time we checked in, they were looking for about 1.4 million for that project. So that's an example of a regional project that is on the priority list. Some other examples would be um, work at the Morrisville Stowe State Airport. Um, some of some of the project that we had on the list was done this summer. I believe Tatros did some some taxiway and some major runway renovations over there, but they're also looking to do some um, terminal renovations. I think the long-term hope being that maybe we can get some passenger flights into the county someday, which would be really, really awesome for everybody, I think. So, you know, that project, it's kind of funny. Uh, there's a portion of it, they're asking for three to 500,000 for some terminal work. And then there's also a portion of the project over a million. So those are the kind of numbers you're looking at there. Um, some of the smaller, well, uh, there's another one other larger project that we've been looking at that's very, very much in its infancy uh, in Johnson. The There's a family uh, child care center that is looking to purchase one of the buildings possibly at NVU and turn it into child care center. At LADC, we look at this as right now, child care has become a major issue for workforce and staffing. Um, everybody's having trouble getting workers right now. And a lot of the onus that we're hearing is that it's due to childcare. And I, I think there's a lot of validity to that. So, you know, if we can get more childcare opportunities within the region, it would help the overall region and workers. Cause obviously everybody who lives in places like Hyde Park don't work in Hyde Park. Probably more people who live there don't work there than do, um, which means travel, childcare needs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, another smaller one, there's a, there's a Moscow mill project over in Stowe. That one's only about 14 grand. I'm not really sure how that would directly impact Hyde Park. However, it is a job creation, um, project. And then one we've had on there that may be something that Hyde Park would have a similar situation would be, uh, the Wol Wolcott's village wastewater system. And I think they've put a cap on that one somewhere around 50,000. So these are the kinds of projects that are on the regional list now. I know that Hyde Park has some some wastewater and drinking water needs, at least that's my understanding. And from looking at your uh, local list, I thought I saw some things on there that, um, sorry, I gotta turn the light on here real quick, it's getting dark. Um, that related to that, namely, I think it was number nine on the list. Uh, I don't, I don't have the details of that, but um, if you have a large wastewater project, and I know I spoke with some folks up in North Hyde Park about the district up there, and there they have some equipment replacement they need vitally. Um, 
items like that can make their way onto this priority list and we probably should make sure we get them on there and and those really are some of the those are the kinds of projects the bigger the bigger projects that ledc can see will have a direct economic standpoint and i know they've economic standpoint economic uh, benefits to the community as a whole moving into the future um and something we would we would certainly get behind um and i it's my understanding there are some projects like that in hyde park in north hyde park that this money could very well be used for and it would definitely fit in our eyes into economic development work um and i do believe that is the intention of a good amount of this money uh, for projects like that that being said uh, actually tomorrow there's a meeting regarding uh, a separate pot of money specifically for uh, municipal water. And I do plan on being at that. If there's any interest from the select board or, or other folks associated with that high park, I'd encourage you to be on that. I think Ron has the details on that, actually, if there's interest. So you may not have to, if, if there's money there for this type of stuff, I would certainly say uh, look elsewhere for your ARPA money. Um, and from looking at your list, uh, the, the, the number one that I identify quickly without knowing the details behind the project is the number nine in terms of economic development, the um, decentralized sewer. I'm not sure if that includes uh, fresh water as well. Um, another that we had interest in was the number 13. Um, any sort of downtown revitalization is something we I can see us getting behind for sure. Um, and I was also curious about number 10, that seemed like a little bit smaller. And I know that the rail trail does have another, a lot of other opportunities for funding that we could potentially assist with, but that would be something we could definitely see as economic development. Um, so those three were the three I flagged on the list. And that's again, not knowing the specifics of those projects. So I guess if there's any questions on, on any of that that I just threw out there. I'd be happy to, to answer them if I can. I think, Pat, what we're looking at with, with uh, North Hyde Park is, you know, as you probably know a lot better than we do, a lot of times here's a big project and what you have to pay for first is a study and an engineer to do all the work to say here's what it's going to mm -hmm. cost and here's what it'll be. And we're looking at using the ARPA money. I'd, I'd like to see us allocate that tonight the North Hyde Park because they got somebody already to go and do the study and then they'll know what everything costs and then they they loop into you and get you to see where we can where we can bring money in to help pay for that. So I think the I think that's a yeah. Yeah. Well I was just gonna say I think that's a great start. I spoke with um um gosh Bob I think his name is the the fellow who runs the water up there. Um earlier last week and he had mentioned that project it sounded like he had it priced out fairly well uh i'm not sure if he's at the meeting or not but um the number he was putting to me with equipment purchase was somewhere around three hundred thousand. but certainly getting the you know getting the design done would be a right. great step in the right direction right. and would certainly show some pre-investment for a priority project for example yeah, as, as I say, as in a lot of these projects, you need you need to do a little upfront money. Um, and and again, I think this is for a town like Hyde Park. Again, several other things that are on there. Something we've needed to do for some time. Um, and as if you were you were listening earlier, as we try to keep our tax our rate under three percent. Um, yeah. But in in doing the air, so we've got good air circulation and flow in the town garage here in the town office and in the library. The library is probably where more Hyde Park residents spend time than any of the other two places. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, those, those are the sorts of things. And if you think about preparedness and, and being ready in the future, the other we have with Kim is we've been moving, as many towns are, getting all of your records and at least going back 40 years because that's what you, when people are changing, buying properties, that's what they need to go back. But getting all of these records online so people don't have to come into an office to have access to the information anymore. If anything, everybody learned this past year and a half 
and still with a lot of concerns because again we have a lot of towns with their you know your town offices are small um yeah you know it's difficult so for a whole variety of reasons be able to get a lot of this stuff online and i think i think for a community like hyde park this is the these are the kinds of projects that we can get done that would that we don't have to eke out over the next 10 years so that we don't increase our tax rate or our, our debt load too much and being able to to bring a lot of good upgrades um, to our town buildings and town services with with one-time money yeah yeah i can completely understand that and this isn't the first time that i've heard this from a community um i was in cambridge the other night and they were saying the exact same thing that you just said essentially um and i understand that and you know certainly that's the the select board's priority if that's their priority they're certainly empowered to you know spend the funds as they see fit um you know from an economic development standpoint we would encourage at least you know some portion of those funds to be used for some sort of economic transformative um project but again you know it, it is the select boards you are empowered to make those decisions so we certainly wouldn't stand in the way of of any of that type being done or have any opposition to it um we would really just support um some of the money potentially being used for things like potentially uh, you know again even i think the like the rail trail parking i can see an economic argument for that and that sounded like i, I think it was ten thousand was the number that was on there um so i guess the hope would be that you'd be able to accomplish what you're trying to do with the the town facilities and whatnot and then you know potentially accomplish some economic development activities as well if there's if there's enough there you know it's really tough to say when we don't know what the numbers are right i i i expect again because some of these things we've looked in the past to get a rough ideas you know as to what things would cost and i think we are um we are well under even with the inflated prices of course now when you're ever going to get as kim is finding when and now because everybody's looking for quotes on the same things and how to upgrade your air filter systems and everything else everybody's looking for it and obviously the yeah. great big projects are the are the projects that folks are gonna you know are, are, are gonna get built and done first but you know that's okay we've yeah. waited this long we can wait another couple of years we've got the money and as long as we can we can commit it and get the jobs done i think we'll be in we'll be in good shape and and again if from from you or for others uh, around the you know the county if there are maybe some uh somebody comes up with some good uh, again economic development ideas things that we can do um there there may well be you know thinking about the rail trail with with the parking in the various areas there there somebody may come up with something that helps um because that is going slowly but surely becoming a really important uh, economic driver all through all across the state um and if there are things that we aren't thinking about right now that we can do and other communities are thinking of it's helpful to have to be told about them yeah absolutely absolutely and and that is a lot of what i do um what i what i can say about the rail trail specifically is that there's a lot of opportunities federally um, and at the state level for rail trail type funding. Um, so the ARPA money is a little different. You got a little more latitude on ter in terms of what you can do with that. I mean, it's somewhat limited, but it, there is it, it, it's fairly open with what you can do with it. Um, so my feeling would be if there's other sources of funding for a project to, to explore those first before, you know, jumping on the ARPA money for it. Um, and if there's, you know, if the concern is moving the money and spending the money quick enough, which is a legitimate concern for, for smaller communities, like what we have in Memorial County, I would say, you know, let's really get with Vermont League of Cities and Towns and planning folks to make sure that doesn't become a problem because it would be a shame to for lack of a better description leave money on the table you know yeah, um some uh, yeah, yeah uh, you know like some of the projects i saw on the list for example there was a there was a recreation project on there 
for, you know, athletic fields and that sort of thing. I'm pretty confident if we get out in front of that, that we could find some state funding for that, that type of stuff. Um, so, you know, I guess I'd say, you know, try to keep in touch with me as much as you can. I, I'm kind of trying to identify what I see here that, that I don't see funding for out there typically. Um, and so the, the, those were the items that I was kind of pointing to um, in the list. But in, the only other thing I would add in terms of like HVAC and things like that for town buildings is that it would definitely be a good idea to at least have a chat with Efficiency Vermont about that before any, you know, before you put it out to bid or anything of that nature, because they may have some assistance as well. They recently had a good program, but it just ended. So. Okay. okay. Just trying to take advantage of the resources that are out there as, as, as much there. as possible. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Pat? Brian, Ron? Pat, do you have forms for getting added to the list? Did you say there's forms or a process to add projects to your regional um, economic development list? There are, yeah, and I can get those to you pretty easily by email. Um, it, some some RDCs are doing a much more formal process with a public hearing and things of that nature. I don't know that we need to do that in Lamoille County um, unless they require us to do that. And I haven't heard that they have just yet. I feel like you know our towns are pretty tight in term, and we could probably just kind of work through it as individuals working together. Um, okay. And it's a public document, so if anybody ever wanted to see it, but yeah, I can get you those forms for sure. Okay. Thanks. Right. Okay. I guess that's it yeah. for now. Okay. And if I can just grab a couple more minutes of your time. Not not to harp on the on the water and wastewater issue. Um because it's not it's not specific to Hyde Park. Several of the other communities in the county and all across the state are dealing with that sort of thing. Um I only thing I would add is whether it's ARPA money or some of this other money that we're gonna be looking at tomorrow from DEC is that you know those are big big projects and they're hard to accomplish so if the money's there and it's possible to do it definitely will have a long long in the future economic impact on not just Hyde Park but the overall you know community as a whole so those are those are pretty serious projects and I see them as you know if there's any way that we can do this it just it just helps the community in so many different ways moving forward both from a housing standpoint to an economic development standpoint i think of a, pl a place like cambridge or excuse me jeffersonville village they're at a point now where they can't build a house in the village because their system's maxed out so that means that town cannot grow it's just not going to grow um until that problem is fixed and i don't know that hyde park's in that type of situation but when we have those situations, if there's an opportunity, and it doesn't always make sense in terms of the numbers, as, as you said, um, but if there's any way to make that happen, now it, now it seems like a good opportunity to try to accomplish some of those big things that are gonna be really hard to accomplish without the pots of money that are coming in at the moment. So, yeah. other than loans, which is, you know, that's a whole different thing. It's into the taxes and all that other stuff, so. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I won't. I won't harp on that too much again. <laughs> that's that's okay. It's a good. It's a good thing to to remind people of. I. Yeah. Okay. I think an area in the village that we one time talked about maybe more economic development. Nobody's done anything, but go we'll check that out too. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, Great. Yeah. Let me know if, if there's anything more I can do. If you have any questions, and Ron, I'll send those forms over to you. We Thank will, you. We'll definitely do that, Pat. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Uh, okay, have a good evening, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. So, North Hyde Park. Yes. How, how much money do you need? Well, we're, the engineers do need summaries in the vicinity of 30 just to do his work. Right, right. And, well, and he's going to give us, uh, at that point, I would assume that we're going to have some good numbers as to what we Total project. Right. I think that's when we get to turn to Pat and say, okay, here's the, yes. you know, and that larger pool of money we go, right. you, you go looking for. But it is just, you got to get 
all of these big projects, you got to spend the money up front to get the engineers in right. and get a good design, and then you got something to do with. Right. So, so how the rest of you feel? I'd be, I'd be. I'm happy all right. To give them that. absolutely. Yeah. Give a, little, a little more of an overview. Oh, you haven't been here, right? Yeah. Right. You are. You know what? I was a little farther away. <laughs> By the way, so how Astros has been there? Been there forty years. When the state come up and inspect the thing, they said oh. you need to figure out replacing these and upgrading, maybe with two smaller tanks or something of that nature, so that if one fails, you still got water going to the system. If this one fails, system's down. Yeah. So that so the engineers come in to figure out the piping and you know what they got to do for electrical, what they got to do for all all that good stuff, you know. Uh, it'd be pretty costly. It, it could be. So you but, figure you, you, but starting with that, starting with then that. you can get to sewer. Then you're actually getting That's to right. development. So it's but this is that, yeah. this is this is the baseline that we need to do. So here's an opportunity to use some ARPA money to pay for the engineer to uh, get the study mm -hmm. done, so the whole thing finally starts moving. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. No problem. So I think probably what we need is a mo it's thirty thousand up to the maybe we say up to thirty two or something. Yeah, yeah right. that's what I was gonna maybe say. just in case sure. that you need yeah. more. Or yeah. More. yeah. The other the other condition would be the compliance with the guidelines. So when oh. the ARPA money is a grant from the feds to the state to the town, the town is responsible for making sure that the money's spent in conformance. In some grant type of relationship. So I don't think we can just cut a check. We have to do the checklist of do they do this, do they? I don't know what that is yet because we haven't walked right. through it all. Gotcha. But if all the guidelines are met, then then the check you need to make sure of that. Well, we need to make sure before we tell them. The to town is responsible. So there's additional administrative time that needs to be spent on that. The engineers um, is going to say what they're going to do. For sure, I'll have a scope of work probably from mm -hmm. them. I don't know if you have one already, but the scope of work is something that we have to pass the guidelines so that before we awarded the money, we knew it was eligible. Otherwise, the taxpayers would have to refund the federal government. A third so, what are the guidelines? <laughs> An inch. <laughs> so, so, all right. So, I mean, but when the, the, the easiest daycare out there, if that system fails, no, no, we're not, oh, Roger, okay. we're not, we're just saying we got to get through. I don't think we're disputing we, that, we, Roger. We can't just, well, we I, can't I mean, just write the check right without. now. Right, they can't move without. We can't move without. So how fast can we get through, through here? The, we, we can all have the money. Right. Yeah, no, it, they, they've already expressed that it's day to day. Yes. Exactly. So we'll operate like that. Right. The checklist, the guidelines, you know. So Maybe the lead like, is your scope of work is what I need first. Your scope of work from your engineer with a number. Okay. Are they going to get to a thirty percent design? Is a typical question. Uh, no, that's a it's a it's a threshold in a project. Well, so you need to give us a list. We'll no, no, a, you don't. You don't no, we don't. You don't we we do the list. This okay. is the town's. You just need to give go me the right. scope of work. Yeah, that's what I mean. Right. But, but we need to know what you want. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, it's called the scope of work from the okay. engineer, and it will list everything that they're going to do and what their product is going to be in the end. Okay. So one of the key words or buzzwords is, will it get you to a 30% design? 30% design means that permitting issues are resolved or identified, preliminary plans are done, uh, the, the service area that this thing has to serve has been evaluated. So I don't know how far along they're here or are they getting really close? I don't know what that, you know, that's so something I, the engineer right. can only answer. Right. It might be helpful, Ron, if you talk with the engineer. Well, I think if you want to have them connect with me, I'll talk. To yeah. Them. I don't want a problem with that. I can yeah. Give them a call. Just see if they're if they're comfortable with it because we're going to be providing the money. They should they call. They should call right away. They have the plan. They have the plan of the system. The way yeah. it's currently yeah. about time. Yeah. Currently. Well, the, your whole team. Yeah. yeah. It is currently. Well, no, they have the plan of our whole system. And Who's the engineer? Yeah. So 
why don't you get them in touch with Ron and then Ron, they'll know we're looking at using ARPA money, so they'll appreciate that. Here's a 75 page check. And they may already they know, they may be dealing with someone else that's well, using exactly. ARPA money right. too. Right. I mean, the engineer sure. might right. already have some insight yeah. too. Right. Right. So I think right. I'm sure we're not the only time. So, so what we need is a motion to allocate up to $32,000 to this project, assuming with the caveat that it all comes under the ARPA guidelines. So sure. sure we can do. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Anybody abstaining? Okay, and will you get the engineer right? in touch? Yeah, 32. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, get them in touch and we'll yeah, you know, that see, see how rapidly we can roll the yeah. stones up the hill. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. We want to help us. We can see it go in the winter. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll call tomorrow. Yeah, super. And we'll go from there. All right, thank you. All right, thank, 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 thank you guys. Thank you guys. Talk to you soon. Do we want to again with these with these other things, you know, the air systems on the three buildings? Ron, and you've been in touch. We've been looking for quotes before COVID, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows when you'll get a quote now, right? It's gonna be like Kim. Oh, in a couple of years you'll get a quote. Um, so you approve somebody? We had done a um, an assessment of the town office back in Geez, mm -hmm. April 2020. So it was early in COVID. Yeah. May. Yeah. So they did an assessment that basically gave us a long technical list of ways to move the air better and cleaner within the small office for the staff. Uh, we try to get quotes. Nobody wanted quoted. They the way the whole year operated was more or less, we'll do it if you hire us today. We'll schedule you if you hire us today. Yeah, we're not going to be in a room. We don't have time for that. They're so busy. schools and everybody, they were in such demand and no, they're still they're so busy. So the, yeah. only, the alternate to that was to rethink what we asked and try to bundle it to a bigger project because the library was going to do their own thing anyway. They were concerned about it. Yeah. Highways have passed for a couple of years for some improvements yeah. in airflow there. So we, we engaged uh, Dave Anderson from Stowe, who's a HVAC engineer that did this building, and he's currently working on a uh, study of the garage and, and library, and I think he met with departments last Monday. So that's, a, he's got to write his report, and we'll get another bundled report that maybe we could get three of them done under one contract. Yeah. Well, that's all never cool. got done up the town garage, did it on the back side there? The bay? You throw a cat through there. <laughs> Oh, it's for the raccoon. Okay. Cat. Raccoon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I was gonna say. <laughs> I don't know what, what they're gonna do for an airplane. <laughs> they have it already. Yes. Yeah, oh, right. An appropriate airplane. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. So that's the HVAC, which is uh, again at some point we'll have quotes for you to have this kind of discussion about doing it or not doing it or modifying it. I mean, schools are pretty better. much caught up now. I think, so. we better, I think they were high priority. Yeah. In the garage. It's really not in. Uh, um, sorry, that that was another one. Was the um, was the HVAC? But I don't have a. I can't schedule that yet until I get the report. Right, and we know. And Kim's got is asking for bids on. Yeah, we're waiting. What she needs. So just, on that. here we are waiting. What's the while we're saying with the garage? So what? What is the garage building status? I'm terrible. <laughs> How long has that been changed? No, right. I know. Never say it. One side of it. It's only plywood. It's all falling off. So peeling and lifting and stuff like that, especially up on the upper part of uh, where the roof line changes. That yeah. was supposed okay. to all be uh, going right. so in through there. Yeah. It was. I don't know if they put any mesh up there or something with that. I mean, we started the work, the crew did, the work crew did, because we were doing the faces right. and um, another thing, and that was moving along. But then we came into winter, I think it was. We had uh, one guy up there most of the summer doing a lot of that stuff. Yeah. And then uh, yeah. uh, we were hoping. I was going to Saturdays keeping them company. 
Mm. Right. That guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And so uh, uh, then we talk about the next step being that part, which is, like I said, the split, the split and level of the roof there, getting that sealed up in there. I know that Mark mentioned that, that was one of his priorities was to get that done. And uh, um, I didn't have any carpenter or anybody that I, you know, could trust uh, up there. So it, I didn't have any. And I got more work right now to, to do, and nobody do it. I've got a, I got, Five people right now on my program that used to do 60 or 70. Wow. So well, that the courts aren't sending me any people. The, the air system is, is a great thing, but before you put the air system in there, you've got to seal the building. I was going to say, that would well, well, be a big waste of money. Could, could, could that be? Part of the system? <laughs> Filling the hole? <laughs> Filling the hole? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's poor air circulation, yeah. if you ask me. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's not. So, do. I think that'll be in the recommendations. Because yeah. the HVAC yeah. recommendations are based on windows and doors. Oh, of course and it will be. Yeah. yeah. Air, yeah. Airflow in general. So, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. right. So they'll see those. Holes. So maybe, about yeah, it's one. It's, well, it's, it's one project. It is one project. Right. It's just one of those. Well, right. But then we we could exactly. contract out the work to get the building ready to put in the and is that a potential yeah, location for this one? Yes. Yeah. 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 And and is that a potential use for this money? Ron. Yes. Whatever happened with the, um, there was some money set aside by vote of the voters at a couple of different town meetings um, for garage repairs. It, it, was that money all spent? It was like 45 or 50 plus another $7,500. Yeah. yeah, that was, yeah, those 47500 from the two years ago, I think. Uh, they only spent some of that on the roof repair and adding uh, ice damn ice catcher yeah uh, and i think a door or something so there really hasn't been much it's been miscellaneous small um i haven't seen a, an accounting recently there's probably 25 or thirty thousand still left in that uh allocation can any of that can any of that money be used towards what they're talking about like the 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 roof or the wherever they need to see yeah, the building the whole site can it's all it is the plywood is falling right off so should we see about getting somebody to come up and look at it? Of course, finding anybody to build anything is like finding well, anything I think, else. I think build. Mark tried earlier in the year and then just got frustrated with it. Yeah. He does no road work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's got to, again, it's, to put that in paper. Well, first of all, we got to get a list like, of like, what needs to be done. Yeah. Really? I, 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 you know, people that may be. Well, that's, I can't go out on the limb on that one, but I just talked to them here a couple weeks ago. And they were looking. Oh, well, I think there's some smaller folks around. Right, so they could be a great job for right. Well, the that's, big guys. That's the big kind guys of what it is. Like right. Three, yep. four guys. Yep. Three guys. Yep. And and basically, the way the construction season goes, anyway, just like everything else is going on right now, you plan on having it done by a certain time, and then if you've got something to pick it up or not, you know, or or maybe the next job fell through or something like that. We might be able to get lucky and find some people. Exactly. So this time of year, it's yeah. very possible. It's very. Do do we have, yeah. I know, I know, Ron, you're saying this guy will come through with them, but you two probably have, and I'm sure Mark must have, here's an idea of what needs to be done. So we pull that together relatively mm -hmm. fast and see if we might be able to find a small contract. Well, he knows it's going to be done because he's been doing it for the last three years over and over and over. Yeah. He's picking at it. He's picking at it. Yeah. Yeah, that's so. yeah. So, you know, but that one old side, no, there was, it was terrible last time I looked at it. It was yep. terrible. I'll put that on your welcome back. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'll, I'll get yeah, that, I'll get that list generated of what we got to get or what it needs to be done. Yeah. And then we and can then, put it out the bid or or you got somebody you can you can. Well, you still got to Yeah, you still got to Right, right. No, still gonna go up. So here's a here's a 2016 list just to give you an idea. <laughs> 2016. And Vermont DOC is listed as a primary contract. So in the good days. Yeah, in the good yeah, days. yeah that's right. Yeah. So the the soffit south wall overhang 
which is above all the bay doors. And that's what we worked on there. Improper yep. supports, things are falling off the front of the building. Yeah, we did some of that. Uh, untreated exterior, replaced water, rotted wood. I think that's on the, the gable end that Roland was talking about because it never got covered, so it rotted. Oh, um, last time I see it, you the plywood like West Side Bay was another project, <laughs> adding a bay for cold storage. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, floor drains were done. Oil water separator was done. Bay doors, I think that's, I think repairs were done, but ceiling wasn't done. There's something about ceiling around the bay doors. I thought you took care of the ceiling, Brian. I think there was a yeah. repair. Okay. We painted, we painted in there around those doors, but I don't remember doing any carpentry type work on them. Oh, okay. And the ceiling, like air coming through or around the door. Um, not that, not the, you know, this air system is not a bad idea. There's well, no, no we need to do. I agree. We, we right? need to get, get the all this building. stuff done first, right? There's no insulation in the building, so they wanted to put the um, insulation board on the outside. Yep. That's which is a adds an R value to the outside walls. Uh, the oil heater and upgrade HVAC for dust and humidity. That's what we just talked about. Right. The exhaust fan, north wall, convert the wind, add some windows for lighting because it's really dark in there so you don't have to turn the lights all the time on. Does all that back wall stuff. Yeah. And the AC compressor was done. Yeah. And the yeah. new oil furnace yeah. was done. So a couple, of, it looks like about a third of the list has been done since then. Okay, let's see if we can get it together and get it done because then we'll be ready I'll for, the, for this morning to do the three. air system. Mm -hmm. And and if we're short, we're all going to this in hopefully to be able to, well, to get that. Is the air system. Yeah. <laughs> you get it directly from the belt side. Of the I have seen some. Uh, uh, and so in the in the paper when I was I came back and I was going through the paper there and, and uh, uh, News and Citizen and uh, um, I remember there was what's his name Eden Dustin Dustin somebody up there he had a big ad very good ad in there for work looking for work so there'll be people for the bid yeah yeah I think I think there will be it's a, it's the smaller guys who have the the big guys are booked up forever. Well, and the good thing, you know, the cost of materials is definitely dropping down again, too. And this is just better time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Some of these are not eligible for ARPA, obviously. Right. They're not related to water, sewer, electric, economic development, or jobs. It's just right. deferred maintenance is specifically called out as right. not eligible. Um, okay. I'm going to send your PDF, too, but you should have it on your phone. Thank you. When let me one of the things right in, in talking about the the finances, what are the different <laughs> I don't want buckets of money that we have? Will the FEMA money ever arrive? <laughs> I mean, Actually, I just you on the first. Yeah, I just uh, I just was handed over that project for Matt Allison was right. managing that so. Talk to the FEMA grant coordinator who works out of Montpelier. Wondering what the list was. She's waiting. The project got all the damage got it broken up into five projects plus two mitigation projects. So the five projects are the, where the money is coming back at two hundred thousand or something. She told me yesterday that the list was really close now. That's all she would say. And Allison told me the same thing when we were going out for closeout stuff. So I don't have anything pending as far as I know with FEMA that they haven't it's in their hands. received yet. Yeah. But the FEMA Vermont person sends it to Washington for her um uh, what does she call it? The ass off. assessment reviewer, some some assessment reviewer team the down black there. Hole. And they're the ones that respond back saying they're happy. So we have to we have to do this three or four step thing before we get clearance on one issue sometimes. And then they don't give you all the issues at once. So I can't answer the question about when they'll stop asking, but we're we're caught up. <laughs> so <laughs> we're not in, in theory, someday we will get approximately how much money? About 200, I think is the okay. last number I heard. Allison. Okay. 
the two mitigation projects have kind of been spun off and they've been identified for eligibility, but they haven't been approved yet. So we're giving them more and more information on what to do with Brook Road and Centerville where the water line at Noise Farm got damaged. So both of those are damaged again. Those are yeah, those are sus suspected reef damage because we only did it basically a temporary repair at both of those sites. If those projects get approved for mitigation, then they'll take off on their own track. Right. And those are in the two hundred thousand dollar, one hundred seventy five thousand dollar each project. Well, the not as far as I know, they're not holding up the first. They it again because there's there's as far as I know, but it's, I'm still catching up. Um, the, the water project at, over across from the end of my driveway, um, blew up again on them over the weekend. Above your door. Yeah. Go and come here. <laughs> this is about the third time in maybe 18 months. And it only ever happens at night or weekends. <laughs> it's one of those is absolutely these. The poor village guys, but I, you know, I, for all, for all the money they're spending, that's one of the you know it's one of the pieces that isn't scheduled to be fixed. And so it's, whatever they keep doing to it doesn't. And they said they're working on it to it's, get that line down through there. Yeah. Talk. Uh, well, it's crazy to me the village goes back that far. What's the village well, pipe goes all the way up into the center room. All the way to center room. Yeah, that's where the water comes from. It's where your water comes from. You know where Bucky's used to live? Yeah. Right behind Bucky's house, there's a spring there. But then it and runs over from the there to the pump house. Said Fitch Hill? Yeah. And then it runs really? all the way down yeah. through. The Fitch Hill. And, and then down here. Fitch I Hill. thought it started it. Yeah, no. 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 Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that well, little brick, that little brick building up there on the side of the road going up through the left. Yes. You've seen that brick building? Yes, I know right what you're talking about. That's, that's the. That's the transfer station. They got pumps in there and everything. They'll pull it out of that spring house. Yeah, that's a long ways. Yes. But that spring up there is phenomenal. Oh, well, it must be. That that yeah. that would supply high part for many yeah, many. Yeah, been right. That's crazy. <laughs> okay, so yeah, there, I got the fact right. <laughs> there's not, well, no, but it's always that. So where this it comes from? Where that so there's the there's the fee the money. We have. have what other Building. pools of money do we have? We have the audit, which is actually this next item. Yeah. yeah. Your audit report for FY20, which is over a year old, and FY21, which is almost on time, need to be produced to know what the unassigned reserve, unassigned fund balance is. And the unassigned fund balance is your rainy day fund, which you yeah. can make special appropriations with voter approval in March. So it's about what it has been running about 500. The threshold by policy is to keep, I think, around 350 minimum. I if I remember right, mm -hmm. or 400, somewhere in there is a minimum threshold by policy that you're supposed to go and get, get that above if you go below it. Yeah, by going to the voters and saying, Hey, we need money in our. You know, yeah, probably you would hold off asking for that kind of thing. You, yeah, you you want to see it done through surplus or something versus tax rate increase. Absolutely. But your policy says you have to have a plan to get it back to the minimum. Yeah. So that's another pot of, pot of money that mm -hmm. could have a special project. Any purpose approved by the voters. There's no constraints on that because it's their money. Right. No guidelines. <laughs> Just no the check boxes. A good presentation and a vote. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And a yes. Yeah. yeah. That's all we need. And then management yeah. after. So yeah. questions yeah. like, you know, when Kim asks how much is left of the 475, we can produce the report and see what the balance is. Yeah. So that's the deal on that one. Okay. Um, we have some money that's coming and going. Uh, for example, uh, we spent fifty thousand dollars on the net zero stormwater project for Maine Church in Maine. That was a thirty percent project. We talked about that. Yeah. Uh, that money will be coming in, but it maybe goes into the reserve. That's where it came from. That's so there's true. no net money, but so you got money coming and going, which you want to make sure is happening. That's Our, why it's so nice to have that there. Yeah. So it doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. It, you don't have to tax it and then refund the general. Right. It just it operates right. over its own. 
uh, that little money in economic development, right? The reserve fund balances. That's another okay. question. So there's five okay. or six reserve funds. Yeah. That should be part of the 21 audit. Okay. So tonight, uh, when we look at Glenna's contract, we want to ask for um, a non-major fund schedule, which is all your reserves. So you can see that right now it's sort of mingled in and not clearly pulled out of the general fund. Yeah. But those are all separate funds that you want to do just what we talked about with the stormwater. Money comes in, money goes out, and it's operating outside the general. So that's a special report that she hasn't, she's gotten, she started to get there, but we want to make sure she can finish that. Yes, yes. Okay. The reason for that is the 22 audit, which hopefully will be part of an RFP in the spring of 22, will be a three year RFP for 22, 23, and 24 audits. Those audits will be better if the 21 includes the non-major fund schedule. So I don't know if you're, if you're not familiar with that, it's basically an attachment to the town audit and it lists all those funds like their own little budgets and it's really good cheat sheet to answer your question. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's, well, it's, it's, it's short, it's all, all concise, it's all like right in front of you and then you can make decisions about, oh, well, should we use, I know where you're headed. Yeah. Should we use ARPA, should we wait for grants? Yeah. Right. Should we loan money? You know, yeah, we've got some we've got some choices, so it just makes it a lot easier when you make a decision. Yeah, for, for making a decision. It it also, you know, is great transparency for the public. You know, when you what you make a simple cheat sheet right. any of us can look at exactly. and you don't you don't need to be an auditor or financial person to say, oh, okay, you know, oh okay, I got it. So when you want to do when you move the money here, you can move it there. And and again, the high part really is in. I think we are the, the town is in good shape um, from years of, of I think good money management and being careful about what we spend. Now it would be nice to show that easily to people, so that so that they can say, oh yeah, okay, this is this is working, and when opportunities come along. Um, you know, because you can, it wasn't that long ago when federal money was coming or state grants were coming, a town could do everything in kind and you didn't have to cough up the cash. Well, that world is vanishing and you're needing to come up with the cash to be able to do, you know, to do your 20%. So it, it's, it's already been very beneficial to have that. Now to have it clear on a cheat sheet for people, <laughs> including myself, <laughs> will be really, really easy. Make it easier for Ron, too. Um, so that's what we, we have, um, as you say, Glenna is most of the way through in getting things done. Um, I think it makes, sense to do a one-year extension with a contract to let her finish this up and then because we talked about doing just because it was time to do it to so why you know to go out to bid after that to, to see what happens but when somebody's when you're two-thirds of the way through something you might as well get all the way through it um trying to change anything right now this year i think would would not be beneficial to anybody. So that's why I put in to do a, uh, a one-year extension to her contract, which is $10,000. So this is the engagement letter, which is basically the contract that would need somebody authorized to sign it. It says that uh, audit reports will be issued no later than January 4th, 2022, or not to exceed 10,000, unless there's some issue or extra work needed yeah, right. you should call us and say hey we got a problem here that wasn't a part of our engagement and it's going to cost money so that is very similar to other years and like this is an extension because her three-year contract ended with the 2020 audit this is for 21 only uh, i don't know and i can't tell from looking at it quickly if a request for non-major fund schedule would significantly impact the 10,000. I don't know if it's sort of included or if she has it and she just has to produce an extra page. I would think she could just. I think she can just do it, but I just wanted to let you know that she may come back and say, oh, no, well, 
I never did that. I have to spend an extra five hours on it or something. I, that's the only caveat that I have to 10,000. Okay. And there's no way of knowing until she asks for that. I'm going to encourage her to include it in the 10,000. Yes. Because it should be part of our report yeah. anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. So Cassidy can talk to her too. Right. And apparently she's shaking her head like, I'll talk to her if you need to. I know. <laughs> she can do that. <laughs> well, that's good. Okay. She looked at it. She has to audibly observe. So yeah. she knows. Yeah. She she knows where all the money is exactly. Right. So yeah. exactly. we've tried to report it, and I think Kim has prepared some prior reports, and we'll say, you know, looking at your town report, I'll say, highway reserve or can you use something like give. It's not. It's getting to what should be in the audit as a schedule right. A or C or something they call it right. usually. So the motion would be to have uh, Susan or I authorize to sign the engagement letter for the one year ten thousand. You can look at that. It's so a bunch of auditing stuff. <laughs> you can look to it anyway. You send it to us, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah. 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 Anybody else want to see it? No, I saw it. Good? No, I'm off. Yeah, we're set. Okay. So I move that we uh, have Susan sign off on it and. Uh, uh, for the additional ten thousand dollars to complete it. Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No, Anybody uh, abstaining? No. Did you put it in? I did, but he then he wanted to look at it. <laughs> I went too quick. <laughs> Ron. Kim. Yeah, Kim. That contract does require you and I to sign it. So if you could sign it tonight before you leave and then leave it on my desk, I'll sign it and make sure to get it get it to her. Okay. Thank you. Um yeah. Okay. Uh the the letter of hire. Yeah, I forgot to add acceptance of resignation in here too. So <laughs> usually we do that for employees that are leaving. We'll so oh, a quick yeah. motion to recognize it for the minutes. Okay. Allison Kusan uh, resigned on October 5th, which was yesterday, it was her last day of work. She's returned all her equipment and handed over books and she's she's agreed to be available if we have any questions. Uh, effectively, she terminated yesterday. Okay. So part of our discussions with her included kind of how do we take these multiple balls in the air and and get through a transition window, which is I think I'm anticipating a three month window to look at starting tonight, which is looking at a slightly revised finance director position to do things that um, she's that position took on and some things that weren't in, weren't done under that job description. Very minor uh, changes, but that's the job description that would be advertised. Uh, second days, VLCT, and maybe Vermont uh, uh, governmental um, financial accounting um, organization, News and Citizen, five day internal. Notice first. Uh, if the board approves, that would go out to any current employees. And if nobody steps forward, it gets advertised um, after that. Okay. So that's just a policy you have. I think it's to make room for promotions and sure. department changes if somebody wants to change okay. something. We don't have a lot of employees that could do the job. Right. Yeah. But suppose you could make an ex i don't I, you don't want to leave out somebody that right. might be yeah right. so, right. I, right. I, we always say it's five days then extra there's okay no, there's no sign right. to it so um ron and chastity and i um met with uh met with ali and had a good conversation with her um and and uh, one of the things I'm talking in leaving is is uh, um, there's just a lot of stuff up in the air and finding you know a good person as you say you looked in the news and said, said oh there are a lot of people looking there's all there's a it's a good time to be looking for a job um, so 
uh, we, Ron and Cassie and I discussed it first, and then we we uh, talked to Allie about if she was interested in, um, and I I knew from previous conversations with her, she she uh, suffers the fate of many Vermonters and feeling like she needs a job and a half to be able to pay all the bills. And so we asked her whether going to the new job, if with these transitions, and she's doing some training with upstairs and this sort of stuff, but as we go through the transition, um, would she be interested in, you know, evenings and the stuff she can do at home, but sort of filling in the, the giant gap that is being produced between her leaving and when we get somebody in and they know something. And she said she'd be happy to do that. And she was, she's not, she's not leaving feeling bad or having any hard feelings about it. And I can't blame anybody when you get another opportunity that knocks on the door and you feel it's a better a better move for you to make. I don't blame anybody for changing jobs, <laughs> you know. Um, so the the letter of hire is in the, again, we think if we look at now, here we are in October, probably going through the end of this year because it could be that long before we get somebody in and somebody trained and, and doing things. So when she said what she was, again, just sort of what, Whatever she was, she was fine with it. So we thought that was a um, and and in reality it leaves us in a situation where we don't feel panicky. We've got to we've got to hire whoever comes through the door, sort of a thing. That we've got some gives us some breathing space to be able to you know. Um, and we've been particularly Ron in chastity went over and um, redoing the job description and here's what we're looking for we realized that that uh, preference really needs to be some with some municipal experience because it's the difference how how a, how a municipal government office runs and how a private business runs are really very different and so looking for somebody that's got some municipal experience would be really helpful in getting somebody ready to do the job. I don't know, you guys, Chastity, you, you and Ron talked about it, so. Yeah, and I think mainly what Ali's going to be doing is making sure the employees get paid and making sure the bills get paid. <laughs> um, those really are kind of our big things that we were concerned about. Um, and the grants and what else was kind of hanging? Well, the, the, main, the main things for me are completing the projects that she started that are coming up really fast. Right. So we have a bi-weekly transition for payroll, right. Right. Which, isn't, yeah. which isn't complicated. It just needs to be done the right way. Exactly. So between everybody in the office focused on it, which would include anybody that wants to help in the oversight of this thing, we want to make it smooth for everybody. So she's been sending pre-notices out, don't forget. You're going to have a gap in your paychecks because we're not going to get paid for a week, that kind of thing. So people need to be planning for that now for the January transition. So that would be one of the just, just watching for things that aren't quite ready to make that happen. Nemeric uh, payroll, which would be the, the sort of the outside support, uh, will help also because the proposal is to have them on board for the end of year reports that are due. And during the startup of a new person. So right. December, January window, uh, ideally we'd have Nemrick here as sort of the the, the back back backstop, if you will, uh, to do a lot of those reportings. And it may be that somebody walks through the door in late December, didn't have to put a notice in, is ready to go and has done this for 10 years. Right, exactly. Unlikely as that may be, it may happen. Good. Nemrick is cool with canceling the contract at any time. Oh, they are. Oh, good. They're not. It's not a commitment. It's just a, it's a prepay with a refund if we cut out earlier oh. than twelve months. Oh, well, so, that's good. So that's was good. They um, Kim uh, took a little extra time and got a second quote for same services from uh, Stearns yeah. Services, and they were just a little bit higher. We've worked with both over time yeah. so it, it really is just a very short-term thing either to help with training or onboarding if you want to call it that or just to keep things moving with the transition the other project was new timesheets 
So we tried to figure out, we tried one a couple of years ago with digital timesheets of the garage, but the, the internet service was so bad that the system kept crashing and there was no way to fix the, the wall mounted thing because it, it would reset and they'd have to put the password in every time and it was like 25 characters and they oh, just, Jesus. I think it just got <laughs> being a coat hanger after a while. So we need to need to fix that system somehow and that having a digital system that does a lot of the calculation itself kind of pushes up the demand on the system a little bit uh, but the integration with the network our internal network for payroll has to be there so either it's going to be sort of what we do now which is like a paperwork manual entry or we're going to be able to find the software that integrates so you push a button and it uploads into memory that's what ideally we would do otherwise you have an interim step of data entry which uh, leads to another round of potential errors. Absolutely. So uh, that was started, and she's talked to other towns, and she's got some software programs as well as uh, so, sort of a basic one. The U.S. Department of Labor provides a free timesheet app, uh, which gets you basically a paper replacement. You still have a little transition of a manual entry, but it's free. So do you go the other way and get the software system for payroll that's really on your phone, at your laptop, anywhere you log in, you post it. It doesn't even get to the town office for payment to the supervisor, checks all their boxes. Right now we did a timesheet without a signature or somebody did math wrong or it's just fraught with little time delays all the way through. Even though we only have you know less than 15 time cards a week, it's still oh, not. And then that's why some towns, if you talk to other towns, some will stay with paper because they have five people and that's part of their primary job is right paper processing. So they're paying it through labor. Right. We're trying to eliminate some of those things so staff can do other, other job duties. Uh, so those are two of the programs. The, the payroll system itself, uh, Krista has been uh, trained. I don't know if it's 100% yet. She, she was going to be the backup for Allie. Uh, Kim has offered to help in any way that she sees that she can help uh, uh, easier now. Uh, According to Kim, then if we had back to back elections going on, then it would be almost impossible. So we're at a good time as far as that's concerned to have uh, Kim and Krista able to help where they can help. So I'll, I'll keep talking to Kim about that. We do have to get bills paid. You know, 80, 87000 for Hutchins for the base coat is waiting to be paid. Right. That should be paid, right? So those are the kind of things that don't stop then. That vendors are generally okay with some delay. But eventually they'll start with the late fees and arguing about too too late. Yeah. As municipals don't generally have some leeway there because we're good customers, but we don't have all the leeway in the world to pay right. those. Right. So that'll be sort of on the on the on tap for next week is to figure out uh, the AP part of all this stuff. Um, so as far as this, but Kim signs checks, right? She can't pay. How does that work? Yeah, so we'll work through. A, we want three or four eyeballs on it. Somehow. Right. The process of all that is relatively set up between me and Kristen, and Kim oh. and Susan, and the oh, board. Perfect. You know, so we already have a bunch of eyeballs. It's just how does that actually process the best yeah. uh, way for this next two months, three months? I, I hope it doesn't go longer than three months. Right. I'm thinking the two to three would be a sweet spot from you know, beginning of December, somebody comes in ready to go and end of December or first of the new year, somebody that needed to put two weeks in it. Or we have a bunch of candidates and you wanna meet them all. That delays things by a month True. easily, yeah. just from scheduling purposes. So we don't know, it's a short story. Right. We're only hoping for a three months. So that's why this is written as a three month uh, uh, finance system, I think. And then the uh, part of the, um, other piece to that is the recording clerk, which is new. So the recording clerk position, which is part of this, has uh, a specific role in the sense that right now the minutes for the three boards, it's DRB, Planning Commission, and Select Board are done by me. Uh, and most of it, probably half to 75% is done during the meeting. And then I have to take that and fill the last 25% in it proof it and publish it on the website or distribute it to the board. So there's a, there's a process in there that doesn't take a lot of time, but it's time that, that sort of hurts the 
function of the town administrator. So in a sense, during the meeting, I'm distracted by the minutes and I'm not listening to either of the three boards 100%, which I should be because I, I have the resources to be able to provide things that are needed when they're needed. But if I'm missing it, just like I was trying to take minutes and Pat uh, Ripley said something about the um, ARPA money. <laughs> Two years to spend, I think he was. I, I'm playing that back in my head while I'm finishing the minutes. And I didn't want to interrupt him when the topic had changed, but it's, it's really three years to decide what projects are going to be funded and two more years to spend the money. Oh, wow, really? So we actually have like a five-year window between now and 2026, 20, December, or return on money on spend. So, but that's the kind of stuff that helps people, like when he, he, he was saying two years is almost like a high priority, we have time to think about it. We have time to think about it. We have time to leverage it. We have time to find other sources. We have time to spend it the right way for the future of Hyde Park. Right. That's not available in the two-year window. There's no way that that's available. Yeah. So who would do the minutes? The recording clerk in this job description for Allison is for her to, to take them yeah. and publish them. So she would be here, or yeah. she But you're required to have it off and recording. Yep. She she would have. She said that she will be here because she wants to get the flavor of the people that are there. And, and be able to recognize people and get, she has to take the hybrid stuff down too. So that's part of the meeting. But from our experience, there's one, two or three people up there and there's more people here, you know, five, like tonight, five or eight people here, six, eight, eight people here, two or three people up there. Um, and then those will be published within the five day window and be done. And nobody else would have any part of that. She would do them and publish them. If you want to read the minutes, you go online and read them just like every, everything else. Which is how it should be done. Yeah, I think, I yeah. Mean, yeah, she's, she, we talked about what expectations are. Because yeah. like, you can go to any of three towns around here. You can, get, yes. you can go to one town and they have ARPA money, no decisions made, which, or ARPA money, $32,000 decision vote. That's all it's like. You go to ours and I have a paragraph or you know this much of a page and it says at the end motion and approve 32,000 with guideline conditions. If you go to I think Johnson and maybe Cambridge, it's almost a transcription of everything that was said. Which they might have a transcript. They might. They almost have to. Yeah. To do it that way. But that's another so that's a cost that we're avoiding. Yeah. Too, because those could be fifty dollars an hour sometimes. I think they are. Yeah, I think they're money. Yeah, so they can be expensive when we don't have a need for transcription right. um, for, for minutes. Um, we do have a you know, video is what we say. Here, here's the minutes, here's the flavor if you want to read it. Yeah. If you wanted the flavor from those short minutes, which are really easy to take, we could do that very easily without hiring somebody because it would be who was there, what was the motion, and that doesn't take a lot of time. Because I'd be, I would be participating with the discussion fully Waiting and I'd say, okay, let's get this motion in. That be it. It's the it's the missing pieces in between where you're either asking for more detail or more details needed, and nothing is coming out from. Them. I think the the more information is, is better. So I, I agree. That, yeah. Uh, yeah. If we have to reference back to it, which we have, um, that information is critical. I think so. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah less, less than a transcription. Right, yeah, somewhere in the middle. But it really, yeah. is, it, it really isn't what you want to see. So, for example, if you decide to go this way and you're not happy, those are directions to the, to the recording clerk to change something. Oh, more, sure. More detail, don't use generalities, use specific terms. There's lots of ways that you could say, oh, O'Brien would say, that was helpful or not helpful. You'd right. have to test that out as the minutes are produced. Yeah. See if you're happy or not. So it alleviates you from doing it, gives you more direct uh, uh, interaction so you aren't distracted. And then for the recording, Allie's going to do the recording? Or who's going to do the recording? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what it's called, recording clerk. So the recording clerk. She would post it to the website and she would make sure it's done within the statutory five days. And what goes on with, with her? You get paid more or yeah so we have to talk about the hourly wage uh idea so because they're two different positions in one letter of hire uh it, it would be appropriate to have two different rates of pay so you have a finance director that's on the upper end and you have the recording clerk which is really basic 
a little more than minimum, a little more than minimum wage, or something that gets that you know gets the person here. And it's it's different now. If you had a professional contractor, they're going to double the rate usually because they have taxes to pay and a bunch of equipment to buy. We provide all the equipment, and we that's that's the disparity between the hiring somebody transcribing and somebody is an employee. We have we have built the cost of the employee right. that you don't see in the employee's rate. So how much more of an increase is it by an hour? What is it? It's the money that we're talking. It's uh, there, well, there, there are two different rates. So the, the finance. Twenty-five dollars an hour and seventeen dollars an hour. Yeah, those are the discussion points. So if somebody were to uh, think those were appropriate or too low or too high, she hasn't seen those yet. So the board would make a proposal that, hey, we're creating two new positions. One's interim short term, and the other one is permanent, which is the recording clerk until if she doesn't like it anymore, I guess, or we don't like her services anymore, just like any other employee. The first one is set to expire in three months. So that would be the. Well, I, I currently like the current situation, the way it is now. Um, and not the cost is that much more. But, uh, um, and like you said, the way that you lay it out uh, uh, gives us uh, what we need, and we can reference back to it uh, uh, in the future. We can reference back to it and, uh, and have that information to our fingertips, you know, in a sense. Um, well, she, she would, that's a style you're talking about. It is. So she would either do the same style and get you what you want, or, or you would say, we don't want that. Or you say, um, we want to do $30, $30 a meeting. Full, full, full board, we'll give you $30 for every minute that you post. That's another one. I've seen some recording clerks get that. I was yeah, I'm sure. Oh, like it's flat all over the place. <laughs> Flat fee kind of thing. Right. Yeah, it's, yeah, sometimes it's a flat fee. And per meeting, posting, and then. Every other town has a different person doing minutes. Yeah, so it's either. It shouldn't be the town administrator. It's usually it embedded in somebody's job description, right. like it is mine or, or assistant clerk sometimes. Sometimes the town right. clerk does it. Sometimes there's a select board assistant that's responsible for agendas and minutes. So that's what they do. Yeah. Um, there's all sorts of different ways to do it. I don't see too many managers or administrators doing it because it does take them out of the game, so to speak, at the meetings. Um, and there could be there could be case that you're, even though they can watch a video, you can word things kind of the way you want to. <laughs> you, you, there could be, like, someone could argue that. I mean, your minutes are amazing. That doesn't happen here, but. It no, costs, it's, it's if they're not doing them, there's it's never going to be. Well, a it's, I think that's part of the review process. So if there's somebody right. that really wants impartial minutes from people that aren't involved, you get somebody that's impartial. I'm not involved. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's what you're saying. Yeah. You want, if you, and I think to Brian's point, having the town administrator do the minutes, I'm familiar with the terminology. Well, that's true too. Yes, you get. So I can sort of, if somebody doesn't say something quite right, I can say, you know, ARPA 2, it wasn't ARPA 1 for the minutes. Right. I'm just giving you an example. It's yeah. not real. But. Right. So there is a benefit to that accuracy. The other option is that I could review the minutes quicker than I could Actually. review them very quickly before they're posted so that I get them from the recording clerk, just look at them for accuracy right. and, and change them. Right. And then it gets posted to make sure there's not inaccurate. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That wouldn't take very long at all. It'll take a few right. minutes. Right. Do that. Right. And I think definitely in the beginning that maybe you should do that. Maybe. I, I, think, to, I think to Brian's point, it's probably a good idea. Yeah. 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 Anyway, okay. because there's enough going on that I'm usually aware of across all the departments that if somebody's you know really using a bad term that that makes it terrible because it it's right. wrong. Right. If yeah. Then I could fix that before it gets published very yeah, easily. Right. But I'm not going to go back and wordsmith style. Exactly. I gotta yeah. take too long to do that. I like the idea of paying per meeting. I go on some. Yeah. yeah. No, I do too. I was yeah. gonna suggest that rather than hourly. Yeah. And yeah. then we know what the cost is gonna be. Yeah. Um yeah, and there's only three let, let's say you use 30, 35. 
I'm just trying to think of a number. Let's say $35 per meeting. There's three to six meetings a month, depending on special meetings or whatever. It's usually the range anyway. So, you know, 100. How many meetings a month? Three to six, depending three on the meeting meeting. season. Well, yeah, most is six. That's <laughs> six for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you get the drop. Kim? Ron, what's the what's the average length of of like all of your meetings? Just hypothetically, because say a select board meeting, all they all go three hours. That's ten dollars an hour. That's less than minimum wage. The other comment is oh, the pay, a lot of places that do pay per meeting, they'll yep. pay per meeting plus mileage. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, yep. the school district does that. Right, so if we get hourly, yeah, so if I ever want to be perfect. That's a good point. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen sliding scales with, you know, meetings under one hour, meetings under two hours, meetings under three hours, you get different. But that, and then you get into the hourly rate. Yeah. Right. yeah. So you can say, you know, <laughs> so minimum sure, wage. Right. You can say minimum wage, but then there's the unknown is the, the following the meeting. How long does it take for the prep work outside of a meeting? Oh, that's true. Like, that's going to be some editing time that you don't really want to lose control of. So you have meeting time plus one hour times the rate. Right. Kim, do you, are you familiar with the formula at the school district right now? Uh, it's a, it's a per, isn't it a per meeting, Cassidy? Isn't that how they approve that? Well, I was just trying to remember how we approved it because I'm, she's a contractor, right? Yeah. Per meeting or per hour? I I feel like we approve 60 bucks an hour. I don't know why I think that. I well whatever it was, it was it was I thought it was a per meeting. Maybe. I mean, and then they always they always go back and amend their motion to say plus mileage. Yep. Plus mileage to get to the from home to the business. Yeah, from home to the tech. From, yeah, from yes, her that, home to the. Usually employees yeah. aren't eligible for that. Right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she's a contractor. <laughs> That'd be a little bit different setup because of that than an employee. I'll have to ask. So I'll find it out. I need to know a figure yeah. of what it. I, 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 I know it's rough because it can depend on the meetings or per meeting or whatever. Uh, it's going to be, I want to know what the, the price is going to be on it. And this is an addition to what the town's already paid. Yes. As a town, have you always done it? As far as I know, I think, Kim, were you doing select board minutes in the beginning? I, I, say, I thought I remembered Kim doing that. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody was doing minutes before I got here. You know, 11 so I was doing them because um, we didn't have a town administrator. Did you get paid separately? No. No. This part no. Of your... <laughs> well, it's it's actually not part of my job. I just was doing it. Oh, okay. The kindness of your heart. Um, so meeting, you said six meetings a month, so this average day. So I should again see what other towns are are doing yeah it. Was, it's all over the place. yeah he started doing that there's no it's sort of like right pick, pick what you're comfortable with kind of question so if you right. wanted to say how how long are like you have the planning commission meetings and the, uh, the planning commission and drb have been running about two well yeah. i averaged it six i did six meetings at two hours each yeah yeah the Granted, board can go over to two to three ish and then you gotta do you gotta think about prep time so for like edit time. edit time, right? So that's probably an hour each meeting. Maybe? Yeah, if somebody's sitting doing the minutes, only doing the minutes, the the, the cleanup stuff should be oh, really. Yeah, cool. yeah. It that's should be true. really. It should almost be yeah. done by the end of the meeting. So yeah. I would probably use two hour, two and a half hours per, on average for the six. If you want to get a, a higher number, two hundred and three hundred. Two hundred fifty bucks for the month. For a month. A month. 250 roughly. Oh, here we go. That's if there's a lot of 
Thank you, Michael. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, this this is a new option. I love it. How much did it, how much did it cost you? Guys? That's yeah. what I need next. <laughs> Two hours and fifty. Great. There we go. Can you do the minutes, please? Yeah. Interesting. No. <laughs> nope. I do like your sense of humor. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Paying attention out there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. I like it. Yeah. So, I mean, we could do a trial too. We could say, like, let's, we could try it and just say $15, $15 an hour, no more than three hours allowed per meeting, something like that. Not, not expected more than three hours. I mean, for budgeting purposes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. That don't work. And then just, and see. And we, could, we could do the three months both. Because what if we hire somebody you want into it? So I know the whole thing. I know the uh, question that uh, my constituents are, would, would ask, and that would be is that, uh, um, and they would want to know how does that boy get filled? Uh, from you, you, you mentioned part of it. Well, during the meeting, your center of attention is is more on the uh, uh, discussion that's being uh, had, and uh, the time to. Work on it afterwards, and uh, um, that type of thing. Yeah. What what shifts that type of thing? I know that the people will want to know that, and that's what's caused my mind. Yeah. So you're you're talking about maybe an hour for each meeting, half an hour to an hour, but it, it, it takes me longer to do the edit because I'm not focused on the meetings. So that extra hour or two per week, easily filled up with jobs that are pending. So on your task list for the select board, if you look at it on your web page, mm -hmm. you'll see tons of work that needs to get done that's not getting done. Part of it is because of this relatively small issue that we could focus on other things. Yeah, well, I think it's an easy thing to shift off. And the reality, if you're looking at it, that couple of hours a week, we are paying an administrator's salary to do what is really basic administrative work. Which I just sort of, that's the way I, yeah, I'm, I'm looking There's at it. There's a value added yeah. thing to yeah. that. You know, mm -hmm. so, so, you know, I'd rather be paying somebody in administrative. Yeah, for, you know, give you an example. I could have spent today an hour, if you want to talk about hour, just reviewing the, the, the grant with FEMA, the FEMA to make sure that that's going. I didn't have time today to pull the FEMA folder, folder out and start to look at that. So all of that stuff is deferred for another day. And that's going to get added on to the to the Hutchins bill that we got today that I have I wasn't able to check their asphalt um, adjustment price. They gave me all the information, but I didn't have time to walk through it to make sure it was accurate. So those are the little things that just get lost that should be paid by the done by the town administrator that get taken up by some of these administrative tasks. Is there any other Everything. things that could have, uh, that have, as you mentioned, there's other things that affect your efficiency? Yeah. Um, well, what is the only way to address yeah. that? Yeah. So when part of what part of this whole discussion here that started with the finance director and the reporting clerk is looking at the town administrator's job duties to get ready for a more significant transition, which is advertising for the town administrator job. So that's not meant to, to scare it's people, instantly, but, but there is a change coming up that we need to focus right. on. And part of it is making sure that the new person doesn't get distracted by things they shouldn't be distracted with, figuring out what the best fix is or best system is. So whether that's processing grants, select, like Susan was talking about, or you guys were talking about grant list enhancement, how to spur those on, that's time that's not being spent right now. That's almost zero. So if you want a town administrator to assist the select board in growing the grant list, there's zero time for that. Do you want the highway department to be managed differently? You know, more accounting, more numbers, more spreadsheets, more um, Dave Gagne will always talk about the data to better manage. None of that's being done now. Mark has it on, its, on his information, but it's not being brought up to the board. That is a town administrator job that could be added on if the board, so it's about board priorities. It shouldn't be making sure the town administrator is producing minutes in five days. That is mismanaging to a certain degree or mis misappropriation of resources. Mm -hmm. 
tax dollar appropriation. Well, and it's, it's, this, it's the sorts of things, again, I said the last meeting, you're meant to, um, you know, the for the coaching and everything, they decided now that they need to do background checks on people that apply. They didn't have any idea to turn on the background checks. So they turned to Ron and said, Ron, how do you do background checks? So Ron takes all of them, he doesn't know it, so, but he takes, you know, takes all the time and does that. So now that system is set up for that. And those are the sorts of, um, again, a couple of hours here and there that if we can figure out how to shift on that, Highly paid employees should be doing highly skilled jobs and sort of this, and again, thinking about, you know, a transition when Ron leaves is um, somebody with 30 years experience has got, is knows an awful lot and is going to do an awful lot, but somebody new coming through the door, oh, we're going to we'll feel the difference. So if we start to try to make some of those adjustments now. Okay, so, no, Ron. Kim. <laughs> Very quick question, because I didn't think about this when you and I were talking today. When you're thinking forward to a town administrator job description for the future, um, wouldn't having a, a separate part-time zoning administrator like significantly free up yes. time for a, a town administrator so that there's it? It literally is two separate jobs. Yeah. I, well, that's. I, I mean, talk about blowing up a job description. We we tried to do that with finance director, but it all sort of works for the right reasons, the way that we revised it. When you look at the town administrator, like we just had our animal control officer resign today. Oh, no. So Keith Ulrich has been doing yeah. it for three years. Yeah. He sends me an email late today and says, I, I just don't have the time. I, I don't want to continue on resigning. So I immediately sent him an email back. Uh, can you reconsider? Because <laughs> I thought, you know, with a little more help, if you need it, we can, you know, maybe refine the job or something. Because it falls back to me. Oh. So now I'm the point person for animal control complaints. You know, and then I have to figure out how to either work with the sheriff's department or go visit people about. Something. Oh, we gave him the authority to write tickets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now we have to have new authority to write tickets. So the job when we talk about what Kim just said. That's absolutely true that the way that Hyde Park has grown over the years right, right. Has, has created the town administrator position with zoning and has been added health officer, animal control, 911 coordinator, you know, highway road commissioner duties, uh, assistance to finance, HR. You know, it is everything where in a slightly larger town you end up with specialized jobs like zoning administrator or planning and zoning administrator as a as a logical next step because if you really want to have growth in Hyde Park you need to have the facilities and services ready to deal with that in a pretty prompt efficient way and one of the ways to do that is to have somebody that has the capacity to do all that and you stand as like we're saying here's our priorities we have to grow the grand list let's figure that out you cannot do that with the current job description for town administrator. Yeah. It's too time consuming with all those other day to day administrative duties. If you spin off things like we tried to do it with um, the engineering services person to help Mark that didn't work out all right. that great. But that was an attempt to say, Mark, don't call me about what technical standard is for a trench for very electric. That we need to put on 1111 call the engineer call yeah. so that is a bigger discussion that we absolutely have to have and i was planning on doing it during the budget season anyway for 23 because that's when potentially the change would happen i haven't really talked about any of this stuff before in definite terms but in my head i'm saying yeah. i really need to talk about this now in the budget because if i say june 30 22 that means advertising in april 22 Right. Which is right around the corner when you look at the right. budget calendar I just put up. Yeah, so you'd have to say 23. <laughs> right. I, but yeah. all this, stuff, I think it's a really good discussion because Hyde yeah. Park needs to make some decisions about what you want from the town administrator because it's a significant position or it's three or four positions. Right, right. And I'm well, almost feeling it's, it's, like Kim said, it's almost a time to spin it off. Yeah. But only if the board's priorities are in this town administrator doing very specific tasks that you think will 
move the town forward. If you want to keep the town functioning and putting out fires, which has been sort of the historical roles, that doesn't require much change at all. You just advertise the town ministry the way it is and work will get done or not done or, or get put on your task list as ongoing, no, no deadline. So yeah. you, that task list, if you looked at it, it's like a third is ongoing, no time frame, no, no time frame right. or tables or something like that. Yeah. Some well, of those are good projects that would help the town move right. forward. Well, I, I mean, I think sort of what Hyde Park is suffering is, you know, we're, we're growing. Um, the world of town government has grown. People can like it or not like it. It doesn't matter if they like it or not like it. The world has changed. I mean, the you know, all the stormwater stuff coming down from the state, what towns have to do now to comply with, to do everything. You, you need to be able to have all these things done and you need to be able to have somebody that can do that work. You need to have the planning that's been done. So when there's money available, you can apply and you can get the money. So the, you know, the, the world has changed and become more complex and it continues to. Plus while we're not seeing a lot of growth in the, in the, grand list so far, Hyde Park is growing and people are expecting different things. We've so got to so balance, we're, we're yeah, we've got that, to balance yeah, that out. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. you gotta you gotta yeah. figure out why. That's why Ron and I have been talking about this. we need to this really is the beginning of a very long complex conversation. Um, you know, but now is the time to begin thinking about it and 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 what you want to do. Um, and, and again, if you look around the state, you see the number of towns that are advertising for town administrators is not insignificant. You know, it's a, it's a real demand because communities, you know, even our size are realizing that you need that degree of planning organization sophistication if you're, if you're going anyplace. So we don't have to solve that. No, no we, don't, we don't have to solve that. <laughs> but, the, no. but Brian was right in trying to figure out the essence of it is as you make these changes, what are the repercussions or what are the alternate things that happen because of that? I think that's a perfectly logical way to look yeah. at all this stuff, whether it's the three month window and what people can bring to that for support through the town clerk's office and my office or even the select board jumping in on, on animal control, potentially, you know, all those things are real things that people need answers on. When Dave's knocking on doors, he can check for dogs. Dave's not here. He's not here. You he's can, not here, you can point him as animal control tonight. Yeah. yeah. Hello. I always think about pride in, in when Susan says, like, uh, um, that we manage the budget and the budget we've always, we're sitting good. I think it's yeah. your word. Yeah. We're sitting good. And uh, I don't want that to change. Right, right. And so whatever planning needs to be done, sounds like, and if you're, I know if you just threw it out there, it's a 2023 possibility, this planning could have been in 2020. You can't, expect, you can't expect someone to give a five-year No, 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 no. Well, no, no. One thing is the planning. <laughs> right. the planning. The planning should have started a year ago. Uh, to to focus on this, we're going to create positions. They got to be funded. They got to be. Uh, uh, There's going to be benefits and all this other stuff, and all those things. Cost. Well, we we started down that, that road with with the financial director thing, so mm -hmm. we're making those changes. Yeah. And we've sort of from that learned, and now here's a more um, a more refined method for that. We have a better idea of what we need and how things work. And seeing at the same time, again, I just sort of went well because uh, Allie is looking for some additional income. Here was an opportunity to, mm -hmm. besides the, the tidying it over, would she be interested in, because at least she's familiar with the town and the people in the town and that whole thing, would she be interested in that as well? And she went, yeah, she'd be interested in that. So I said, okay, here's somebody that knows something you know, when the <laughs> when we got the letter and said she was taking another job, it's like, eh. oh, the other thing, I mean, we do have money in the budget for recording, so we're not adjusting the budget. We're appropriating the money that's in there for auxiliary help. We're leaving some extra, about six, seven thousand a year. Okay. You found it. It's in there. It's, it's in there. It's in there every yeah. year for 
for things oh, yeah, yeah, understand, understand. for emergencies yeah. or extra elections or you know having a big project in the town office and this mm -hmm. is just right. more of an appropriation of a specific dollar amount that would be applied to it leaving some additional resources for uh, unknowns let's say right so i asked so my it doesn't affect the budget that over. fellow town mm -hmm. oh okay morseville's town clerk administrator does town clerk's assistant does it and they pay her hourly and he's finding out how much and Johnson does pay a transcriber oh, contractor. Okay, so that's, that's like so the detail. <laughs> yep, Beth said, yeah. She said, I'm not sure what we pay. I can find okay, out. Yeah. I'm sure there are a lot less. And the other so yeah. yeah. But that explains why well, <laughs> the meeting notes are right. word for word. Okay. But okay. just so we have a comparison. No, that's good. But Appreciate that. So now. So where are we at with these? So we need, I think, first. First of all, the first thing is with, um, I think maybe in, if it works for folks to do the three month contract with Ali to get us through this transition and making sure that the bills get paid and all those things happen. I think that worked for everybody, that worked? Yeah. I don't want it to tarnish the image of the town, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's the first thing they all cared about was to make sure you can pay us. Okay, we can pay. That's right. Okay, we so we need that. a uh, motion for that. Uh so moved. For, but they just but her agreement has both in it. Yeah, well that's right. right. We need to do you it. You can break them out. Well, we can. Okay. It's all okay. that's just the this just is see it. This is the finance part. Okay, so this is just finance part. we are agreeing to go into an agreement with Ali, who's on for the payroll and finance assistant position for a three month period. Yeah, right, 25 bucks an hour. Okay. $25 an hour. Okay, uh, any more discussion? Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Now, yeah. what, what, what do we want to do with reporting? Uh. I'm all for her doing the reporting. Uh, I don't think our administrator should be doing minutes. I don't. So, I think it's worth. Well, we're going to afford it. I well, well, now you made me feel like you made me feel even you. You I sold me when you said that the money was our money. Well, and yeah. I'm like, oh, no, okay. Me, I, I should have said that earlier. But no, I, didn't, I really wanted to have this discussion. discussion. I was focused on this, this bigger discussion about yeah. this. This beginnings of a longer discussion yes right so have you know everybody participate in this one yes. right. yeah right. yeah one yeah. thing is helpful yeah. because it's other things will be coming up that we need to have the same type type of cost months. to impact the budget months. Months. Yeah. Yeah. No. okay so um and what do we want to do with the pen for the recording well we'll do hourly Right, because we shouldn't do per meeting. Yeah, it sounds it sounds like doing hourly with plus travel. If you do it by hourly pay, you travel. I don't think we can. No, not for employees. Yeah, for it's employees, we can. Because we, we can charge her for it. But, <laughs> we can we can well, do a commuting but, but, fee. But yeah. we can do the meeting time like plus half hour for polishing it up and getting it out. She, yeah, if, if, should be if she's doing good work during the meeting, which should be possible, then the half hour to clean it up and post is yeah, is and she should get it to you to get first. it to right for right. review, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So then, do we have what do give me a number? Seventeen bucks an hour, fifteen bucks an hour. What I don't. No, because I see you put. Was there a reason you put seventeen? Did you have a, a thought in your mind, or I would stay with the seventeen. Yeah, yeah. well, it's I just mean, you know, it's, it's a reasonable amount of money. Yeah. yeah, it's almost the lowest rate we have for regular part time. Okay. I think the library staff is almost there. Okay. Um, okay. Highway and be. fire departments up around fifteen or sixteen. Okay. So I was like, I was like trying to figure out. No, that's okay. 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 Fifteen well, would be a lot. To answer okay. one of your questions, fifteen would be a lot. Anything okay. over that hour is right. your that would be service. The time plus a half hour right. getting to get a yeah. okay. That allows the tracking too, because minutes are and video record the minutes meeting time. So there's a control so, on it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay
Yeah. Okay. So make a motion there. Okay. To hire Ali Kuson for the recording clerk job description at an hourly rate of $17 per hour to attend meetings and post the minutes. Get the minutes to Ron for review and then posting of the minutes. Right. And it's the meeting time plus a half hour. Meeting time plus a half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We got a second. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Did you get that minute taker? That's <laughs> right. <laughs> My cryptic notes here. Yeah. My God. Yeah. Yep. Pull it together. Uh, oh, then number. Oh, yeah. Number. I guess we need to. That, that's what we're doing. It's nice to know that they. That we'll get the money them. back if we don't yeah, need them. Yeah, if we don't need them. That's a, and is that like the lump sum and they're going to work off from that? When we need them, is like a, I think it's just a it's a monthly charge based on our payroll system. So if we start in okay. December, it's weekly, and then there should be a less of a charge when it go bi weekly. Yes. But they wanted a contract for five thousand. So I don't know how to actually do a refund if we cancel it four months. We'll have, right. to, we'll have to negotiate with them. Yeah. Over. There's yeah. not going to be significant though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm in favor of paying people i <laughs> think the employees appreciate being paid well and i'm more concerned about the end of the year tax the tax the tax the, the payroll yeah. tax forms and w-2s that need to go out because that needs to get done in december so yes yeah, pretty yeah. important people do kind of like that i mean that's a pretty big legal thing if you don't do it so. <laughs> um anybody need any more information about it questions concerns Okay. Need a motion for Nimbrick. Uh, second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. And while folks have looked at it, as, as I say, this is our, our revised job description. Did we decide if we were putting the pay range in it? In the Need, ad. In the, in ad. the ad, right? Yeah. So it's because if it's not there, people might. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think scroll yeah. on by. Okay. Yeah. So the good thing about getting this done now is that you have the you have the savings, if you will, to fund the position from let's say January one to June thirty to make up it was paid more or less than Allie was making. Oh, you don't okay. know that yet. Okay. Right. If it's paid the same, you have the money in the budget. If it's paid more, you have the gap of not paying somebody right. minus uh, the, the extra fees that we put in there. Um, but if you go too much higher, then we're going to have the same debate that we did for the union contract. We have to recognize that and maybe try to find money like we should be doing for highway during the current year. To yeah. make sure we get to June 30 without overspending the budget. Okay. So we do have to be aware of that. This is another position that if you go above what's in the budget for Alley plus some extra funds that we might save from like you know, health insurance payments, those kind of things that we save during a vacancy. Right, right. right. That'll um, be rolled out to next year. We'll have to make the adjustments starting for July 1 and your 23 budget. So that all should be sorted out by the time you publish your January budget for the right. voters. So it's a good thing here. Uh, so the range, uh, I think we're talking about 22 to 30. 30, 30 I think. Yeah. Now 30 puts it kind of high up there. They have to come with a lot of goods, so to speak. Yeah. They have to hit the ground running. They have to have familiarity with municipal and sort of be uh, in the five plus experience with all the systems and not have a lot of training to do to, right. to do that. On the lower end, I expect somebody to come in with some training, but we're still expecting governmental accounting experience. That is going to weed out a lot of potential yeah. candidates if you stick to it. There's not a bunch of people out there with governmental experience, accounting experience. There's a lot of people with business experience. There's a lot of people with bookkeeping or even basic accounting or 
running a small office. There's lots of people there, but when you get to the governmental accounting and all the funds and trying to be familiar with the lingo, sometimes it takes a little bit extra. So if somebody were to come in and say, I am ready for this job, but I have no governmental, we, we would have to take that in consideration with the hourly rate. Right. Because we really want somebody with the five plus of governmental. It just makes the whole world transition easier uh, for everybody involved. If not, uh, for example, we hired uh, a CPA to assist Allison along with the, Glenna doesn't really provide assistance. She's our auditor. Right. But we hired an outside CPA to help uh, Allison with stuff, some stuff. And Kim had to help Allison with some stuff. So it was sort of like a group effort to get her up and running. And that, that type of effort is at the lower range of that, right. which is closer to where you have in the budget. Do those people know anybody? <laughs> yeah. Does well, Lana know anybody? <laughs> part, I, I really don't know what's out there. I've seen yeah. a lot of ads come out, but a lot of a lot of people are um, I think government because the way that job description that you have in front of you is written, it's really interesting for somebody that has the skills and capacity yeah. to get in and jump and run because they have a little bit of resources, they have a little bit of you know, yeah, union, so a bit union deals and how that works. They have a little bit of payroll, they have AP, the receivables, you know, working with, um, they don't really have a lot of public interaction. So that's one reason we have a proposal for after probation, some remote work possible because they technically don't need to be in the public face. You know, there's nobody coming in to meet with the finance director. Right. Um, their interaction is really with other staff for payroll and invoice questions that can be done digitally with the way that we're headed for that system. So remote work is becoming more of a bargaining chip with people. Um, I talk to people all the time, including Mike, who was, I was talking to when some of you came in earlier. Oh, yeah. He's moved to Oregon. Oh, really? He's, he does all the, all the editing, all the talking, all the coordinating remotely through the GMA uh, TC campus to here and man and will publish the YouTube video today or by early tomorrow from, from Oregon for your meeting. Oh my gosh. So it's relatively yeah. seamless. And as those things yeah. get more developed, people that are used to it or have experience with it, especially with COVID, are to say, can I do anything home? My my family life is like two or three days in the office and two or three days home. Yeah. Because that's what my whole family life revolves on now. <laughs> And then we say, no, you have to be here five days, eight to five. And we're like, I just can't do that. Yeah. yeah. I don't. Yeah. So I mean, we're expecting that to become more of a, a norm. No, a negotiation or expectation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's going to be. And you could, you could say no. You yes. could say yes. But for that particular position, it's more of a probably, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not one of those office jobs that really can't be done digitally. But there is some need to come in from time to time and process and file papers and do all that hands on stuff. It's kind of interesting to see where that all goes to the ones that are at home, working at home, setting their own schedule to some degree and tending to their needs and plus work needs and stuff like that. And then there's the other ones that, are, that have to be in the community, have to be face to face yeah, with face. In, yeah. other yeah. individuals and stuff like that. I wonder which one would grow financially better in the long run. And, and just a question. I don't know. There's some, there's some people, I think the state of New York, sorry, a company in the state of New York, I think it's Indeed, big corporation, mm -hmm. job search company, had hundreds of employees downtown New York City, hundreds, just, you know, probably half an office building or something. COVID went and they dispersed all over the country with, in the beginning, with their New York City wages. Oh. So we have a friend that was working in South Burlington at almost $200,000 an hour doing his same 37 and a half hour job in low rent South Burlington compared to downtown compared to Manhattan. I think a lot of people did that. Now, they, the, Vermont, the, right? the company has got, <laughs> got smart. Uh, so yeah. now the deal is they do a prorated lift cost of living wage ah. for their remote workers. So if you decide to move to Texas or I move to Tennessee or Florida, mm -hmm. where the cost of living might be cheaper than Vermont, my wage would be reduced by 10, 15, 20%. Ah. Now if I move to New York, will you increase it? 
There you go. I think they do a they cost probably do. It's a formula. It's a yeah. cost of living. Yeah. So if you move back to New York City, back, yeah. you're going to get the adjusted wage yeah, for New York City. Yeah. Huh. So it's just interesting how people are doing oh, it. Is. It's, all, it's all changing. So. No, I'm just. Yeah, but I'm, saying, I'm, I'm expecting that for finance director, potentially for a new town administrator, potentially for zoning. There's a lot of zoning administrators that are all remote, except for enforcement and taking pictures, maybe. So I see that in ads and some jobs in the interest of one city up west said we're doing 100% remote because we figured it out and we can provide better service remote. I don't think every municipality can do that to begin with. Yeah. We had somebody walk in today that had to had to sit down and work something through with live people. So that is a service that I'd say is probably 80% less than pre COVID. Yeah. Well, but and in but Vermont, it's still everybody has that, internet. It's still a service <laughs> at the time. I mean, so you do have yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, some people that don't, they they could be off just outside the the internet world and yeah. not be able to yeah. participate yeah, that way. So anyway, I just wanted to give that spiel because in the job description that you see for the finance director yeah. as a as a potential um, negotiation of, of sorts. So if the board's comfortable comfortable with the revised finance director position job description, then that, that would be approved to go out public. Okay. And we'll see what happens with the ad. We'll see what happens, right? <laughs> um, I'll do the five day internal, you know, tomorrow through the weekend. The newspaper deadline is Monday night or Tuesday morning <laughs> for next Thursday. For next Thursday. Right. So it might be Tuesday next week. I don't know, right. I don't know if they do with holidays. Um, Thursday next week with a couple of weeks. I think we're thinking end of October for the first round to come in and yeah. See what happens. See what happens. And then you decide to accept those or extend. Uh, usually, it'll say uh, uh, applic uh, application reviews beginning on October 29th. So if you have a deadline at least, then, yeah. it's, then it's open until filled. You don't really want to put a cap on your time frame, but you may want to re-advertise potentially, which would delay things probably through the holidays at that point. I think we have a little yeah. sweet spot to get things sort of sorted yeah. out before the confusion of the end of your holiday stuff coming in. Totally a wild card, a whole bunch of extra work, but it's something that gotta gotta be done on top of animal control. <laughs> I'm just I can give you, I can, I give you an example. All right. I could have the best intentions in the morning to, yeah. to nail the exactly. FEMA file and get used to that. Uh, and then it gets blown out. So if anybody knows animal control, dog lover type position that wants to be trained to get tickets and wants a ticket book, roll it. Then we're going to be looking up right advertise for that too. Not hourly. <laughs> lump sum fee. Hourly. With my Okay. I get so we need a motion to advertise. Oh, with that description? So <laughs> oh, <laughs> All right, no. for our finance director. Okay. For that one. Okay. <laughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? <laughs> okay. Oh, my goodness. Tired, but I know. <laughs> <laughs> he's quite down at that end of the table, but he's paying attention. Right? He's thinking about my brother. Let's see, control <laughs> officer. <laughs> okay. You got anything else? Few oh, we can. Okay. okay. Um, uh, where are we at with Prospect Street? Just worked on that today. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. We had, yeah, that's why you were away. We had a good, another good meeting with him up there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. 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 Charlie. You went up there and met with him yeah. on the feet? Yeah, oh, we were yeah. out there and back in the, the, the whole crew tour up there, everybody. The pavers, the everything, it's like the, okay. We got an email today from EJ. And Mark. Mark. Mark Pelliquin has taken over the prospect job for Hutchins. Oh, okay. 
<coughs> and Mark was there at the site visit. Yeah. That they can do the job, which is stormwater improvements by snow plots. They can't commit to a date, but they'll definitely get it done in this fall. Which leaves us in a temporary, what do we do with the disturbed area of the stormwater systems in there, which we might have to put them. If it's really muddy and stuff, we might have to put a inch layer of pavement on there or something, or a whole bunch of stone. I'm not sure which way it will go, but something has to be done because you have a mud hole down there. That's the only problem with such a late project. And that's going down to the very end, right? Just in the loop area. Yeah. And they'll be all ready for next year's yeah. road work. Yeah. Um, Hutchins has estimated the cost at 72000 I think. And I also got an email from Peter Danforth, yeah. who's the money guy yeah. that needs to get the 60% grant or more under that condition yeah. of them. And he is still waiting for the final approval for that. But he said they, they could probably do a 60%. But the way the system works is only a few people involved, but they're all busy with everything else, so he can't get answers when I need them. Yeah. So hopefully the the um, planets align, the parts and pieces come in, which are then ordered by Hutchins ahead of the grant answer because they figured they could use those parts and pieces in other projects. So they yeah. aren't worried about putting themselves out with that inventory. Those are due by the middle of October. Well, Mr. Right, and so Brian knows it turns out they have to they have to put in more. Containers, chambers, then they, yeah. chambers yeah. Than, than they originally thought. So that was the big conversation up there. What the changed? The engineer did it first time, right? He developed what uh, what it was going to be. Then I can't. They were all there on the brand. They said no, but this is what needs to happen. So, okay. Yeah, that was part of the meeting was to final yeah. design it so that. Right. Oh, okay, that's right. part of the meeting. Okay. Right. Yeah. So the engineer did the road layout. The other engineer for Watershed Consulting did the stormwater, but nobody had the total project. Oh, yeah. So when they really figured that in, yeah, they so, were, so they figured the only way we could do this is to go on site. And that's where the, the contractor was there, the funding people were there. Yeah. What did we come the up with, were with, there. with uh, um, just keeping everything out of people's driveways and stuff, right? I know there was a concern about water going into some of the driveways. Is there something? Yeah, so the, the flow is, um, the flow in the loop is directed to the basin. Should be, yeah. The rest of the road is sheet flow equally so there's just no ponding per yeah. se. The problem with the driveways, at least on the south side towards the end, it's really flat grade on there, but the road's gonna be elevated just a little bit and the driveway grades will be will still get water, but they'll be blended into their side yards. So it's not like it's gonna be ponding, it'll be okay. directed off into their property equally. And before now it kind of comes down the road and gets stuck at the loop and that's where the road kind of destroyed itself after one time, but still it yeah. got to it. So the stormwater should be all directed properly. The road would be paved and covered next year and matched into the proper grades. And the oh, elevation. They're, they're milling that early? Grinding no, it? they should be grinding it because grinding. they want to lift it and get it to the right elevation. It's kind of sunken over 40 years. So you, you can't you can't shed stormwater if it's below grade. One thing I'm thinking about with, with the uh, pitch hill thing there too was that uh, I got just processing it through my mind and, yeah, and uh, especially around like where Rolly there is and other areas up through, it wasn't just the uh, grinding uh, that raised the elevation. It was the disturbance of the uh, of the road when they excavated for the end blasted or whatever or, or jackhammer. It should then blasted the jackhammer for the yeah. what? What'd you say, Susan? The jackhammer, yeah, so the blast. I can't, no, it wasn't blast. It was, it was making me crazy down at my house. I can't imagine how you guys lived in that. So, <laughs> you know, what, what, what I'm just saying is, is um, um, it does, in a, in a sense, justify the the raise in the road to have been graded out. I mean, it's past tense now because it's already paid to some degree, but. Um, what I'm saying is, is, I don't know if anybody took that into account with uh, with um, all that other disturbance that happened. And then anytime, you, uh, as you know, just like when you grind it, it raises it up. When you dig into it and disturb it, it raises it up. 
in the and you compact it back down, you do your best, and then but it still always elevates it some. So uh, um, just just in what my assessment uh, of it, it probably should have been graded down a little bit because it wasn't solely because of the uh, grind that raised that road. There was a disturbance. Uh, there was a factor in it uh, on it, and I just and then so when when we when we do that on um, Prospect Street down there, um, there's going to be digging in that center area, but I hope that won't disturb any of the other area uh, around that so that uh, we have to lower it or raise it or, or whatever it's uh, Yeah, that's enough. To keep that we didn't do an elevation plan on Pitch Hill. Yeah. That was kind of the too, too, many, too many fingers in the pie. You had the, the Minash people doing all that stuff that yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. The town guys coming in with Hutchins to do the, the other work, and what Mark and, and the town guys trying to help out way too much. So what Mark and I have agreed to do a um, future project is never to do what we did this year again on Center Road or you mean flagging and stuff like that? Anything. Any involvement. So we, have, we had a choice early on, which we thought was a good idea, is, is to help basically save some time yeah. or costs whether right. we're by having right. the town grader go up or have uh, town do the roadside shoulder stuff which are mo most towns do we actually i think the highway guys don't mind they hate doing it because it's a lot of work but i think it's the cheapest way to do it we got a quote for center road from pike to do shoulder work which is like thirty six thousand oh, dollars and i believe the town highway guys could do it for way less than half of that Very nice. So we're hoping that that would stay, but the coordination on a project like Center Road and even with um, Fitch Hill is costing us money and it's costing us deferred projects because we can't coordinate Pike's paving right now with Manash's reclaiming and the town is stuck in between trying to keep the road ready for paving and Pike keeps pushing. So I don't know how many times they've been up there, but all oh, the road, they it. all the roads around town are basically failing because of no grading. Yeah, Not that they haven't failed, but if you go up uh, West Main Street off of Black Farm Road, if you come up the hill from the yeah. road, yeah. you'll see the beginning of a washout because the road there's no ditch there, which is part of the sinkhole upgrade on Paul Paul's property yeah. there. But the water's forced to run in the road, which is a high maintenance situation because now the wheel ruts are carrying water. And all it takes is a four inch rain in a couple of hours to make it all down the rail trail. And part of that's the, the grader can't get there because it's preoccupied on multiple regradings of Center Road. Multiple. So, so if, you, <laughs> if you actually say the town can help, it's got to be very clear and almost a commitment by the contractor with no flexibility. Because once you tear up a road right. and you don't have control of when the paver comes in, we're left holding the bag on the. Yeah. Maybe. Repairs and fine grade. Yeah. Um, and spending a lot of time up there. The Fitch Hill, I think we got lucky last winter. I think Rolling could say that whatever they did over the winter was good. They held for most of the winter with compaction and we didn't have washouts and we didn't have all these other problems. But still, you know, right now we're in a situation where we, we allowed Hutchins to come in with the base and they are. Doing the same thing they promised to get it done this year because we have grant commitments from the state of vermont for the water project so we need them to bill us totally before the end of this construction season so you're going to add prices in for the lawyers except yeah that's part of the part of the now part we're going to take and we're going to take and cut them in back into the door yards um, there's one up on top it's fine well i think all, all of them when they're done with that top coat which is another mm -hmm. two inches should yeah. it should blend those transitions. All of the driveways on the east side of the road going up, which is on your right, should be really nice when they're done because they're they're they're, they're because just, I don't want no scenes my driveway. No, they're just uh, but they're just about right. I mean, if if they mess up those driveways on the east side, then it's a contractor problem. The left side, on the other hand, there's a lot of fine work to do. A lot of those are the bigger drop offs. If you go through over looking like fats. Uh, yeah, Pat, Pat had an interesting response. He said, I think he told Mark or 
the contractor that he has plans to upgrade his whole driveway, his personal driveway, to bring it up because even that will, it's like an old swamp over there. So he, for some reason, he said, it doesn't matter to me, I'll, I'm going to match it later. After you're done, I'll match my driveway to your project. That's funny. Anyone who told me <laughs> we're getting two different starters. Yeah. So, so the only thing that we can do with the second la second layer is to make sure those transitions are good. If you go up the top of the hill at Fitch Hill, I look at um, Hodg Hodgson up there, Parker. Oh my! So we went back and we put um, Surepack in there to blend out his drive. That's what I saw. Yeah. So you can see that. See that. That's all done now. That looks really good. Um, and then that, and he's contracting with Minaj to start in his drive his garage and come back onto the town. So we're trying to figure out how to make that all work for him. So he'll have a good driveway in the end. But it's hard to see when you do the the first pavement layer, know that it's not done because people are like, well. Ah. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to meet with everybody that has an issue and come up with the best best plan. So anyway, the the point of all that was we have to be very careful. And I think I talked to you about this and and Roland on the scope of work who does what and when those bids are settled when they're awarded and what the amendment process is going for so all those things line up the, the the ideal way is to right about now look at your 22 projects and be working on the bid for the for that work right now like october november december put it out there in january they can start in may or they can start in june but they're done by September 30th or September 1st, not this November stuff that we've been doing. The other option is to wait until April, May, June, bid out 23 work and say you have from September 1st, 22, all the way through August 1st, 23. So that you're, you're front loading all these contracts where we're not faced with what we are now. We have, we're trying to figure out When's double yellow striping going to go on center road? So this morning, first thing, six o'clock, state sends an email. By the way, all you towns out there that are waiting for us, because we get three class two line striping, double yellow, <laughs> that center road is one of them. We're probably not going to do you this year. And, 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 we, can't, and, we can't find the paint. We, we're, so what we're going to do instead for you, for you towns that have paved recently where there's no line striping, We'll put you as a priority to use what we have. But we're not, okay. well, we're not going to do Center Mill Road, Center Road, Depot Street, and East Main Street, which are all untouched old paint. Uh, I I think that's okay, but I know you run into problems with you know sign rate you know, and UTCD standards for line striping and things like that like that eventually. Um, Pike has the double yellow in their contract, thankfully. If they read that far in their contract, they know they have the double yellow. We put a deduct on their bid, should the state come by. Now it looks like the state will come by because that's going to be new pavement. But we have no pavement yet. And they're going to end their paving probably around the middle of November. Which or is, they'll run out of what they say. Or they'll run off because they, exactly. right. yeah. So those are all, that, that happened all day today on top of those other things we were talking about. So it's a very, you know, very juggling type of, seen out of here so if you if you have any you know project planning ideas during the budget season that we're in that this is really the time we should be settling on that stuff not adding a reclaim component to center road in yeah. july or august when the contract i'm gonna say it I you know not, not, i'm not criticizing i'm just saying that's the worst right for the worst thing you don't know. <laughs> well it was because a year before that we were there we were there and we decided I know. not to grind it. I'm, I'm and somebody brought it in. I'm supposed to. I know, I didn't want that. Roland, I was I'm specifically say I talking you know. about the bid that went out. <laughs> the bid that went out was not what we had right. said. So I don't know. That's, that's the thing. So the board is going to get together. Yeah, so think, think very clearly going what, forward. What he's saying is that if we discuss it way ahead of time and then finalize it, and then we. Oh, yeah. Don't change your mind. No, that's, right. no, that looks like an extra. Right. Yeah. 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 Keep your, right. keep your interest wrong. moving forward. Don't dwell on the projects that are big because it, it does upset the apple cart a little bit. Absolutely. But puts Mark, I think it's a little more than that. <laughs> <laughs> puts Mark in a, you know, how much <laughs> hard can I deal with this mode? Right. You know, 
it's an excellent grief on his table trying to do roads grief or whatever, whatever those options are. Well, center road's nicely graded. <laughs> Great. That's going to be one of the best roads. Yeah. 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 When are they going to pay those? It keeps going on. They just turn it off again. Really good. Yeah, they, uh, they rented it. They, they rented yeah, the it. The the oh, they rented it. 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 They rented to both Prospect Stormwater, which is a different division of Hutchins, and their paving division is committed to to Pitch Hill. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Pike is committed to November fifteenth. When are they committed to saying to, they're going to do it? Or? This year is the best they can yeah. give us. So, I know. Which is good? running out of time. Very that every crazy? day goes by. The well, emails we sent me from like, Pike. I'm like in three weeks. In two weeks from now, my door is going to be fixed by somebody. Because I'm going to have it done. Any work you want to donate to the town is fine. Well, not donate. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to hurt the over here. You remember, right. We opened up a can of worms one day in Garrick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you want to use that? I'm going to use that. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I tried to I forget mean, all about that. It's been one good summer when that hill's on the corner where I live. <laughs> oh, oh, man. It's been, you've been a lot of work done around you. And my wife is about this far hey. from going off. Well, <laughs> you don't want that. I, I, I don't want that. <laughs> all <laughs> somebody has to do is blaze that back line of yours, and you'll be all set. <laughs> but well, I mean, woke, up, the woke up the other morning. Oh man! And you wanted to see the water in there. She was what? In your basement. No, oh. water in the toilet, water in the water. Oh. I don't, I don't, I almost, I all that water. I told him that you needed help. Or earlier, my greater for the town of Chuck. She got me out of bed. I wanted my bed a little bit of extra from her. I was in the back of line. She even pulled off the top and of the sun. I was on it. Look at it. It was like mud. Every, oh, no. That little storm. Did you see that storm? Yeah, that happened she drank water. Georgia. She said, Alabama. Oh, oh, I know my wife. I know. I know. Yes, maybe it wasn't even thinking. Right. You know. Lost them. Well, okay. Like okay. All right. Let's move on. Okay. Are we done? Yeah. yeah. We were so, done. You have anything else? Right. So, we're done. So, I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry. What happened to the power pole? We're shifting the road a little. Too. Yeah, we're shifting, shifting the road. It'd be thirty thousand dollars to move the pole. Thirty thousand dollars. Yeah. Move that pole. Yeah. Yeah. We said okay. That's the end of that plan. <laughs> that's just that's just a down. Kim, Kim's still on here. I, I hear Kim. Yeah. I have a quick question about the Nimrick payroll contract. Yeah, they approved um, that. Item, oh, yeah, I know they approved that. Item five says the contract's going to run from blank to blank. Is that starting January first, or is that starting December first? December first. December first. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if that made it to the motion, but that was discussed. So yes. So yeah, my, there, it wasn't in the, it wasn't in the motion, which is why I asked because I just want to make sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it in the discussion part, but it wasn't part of the motion here, right? Thank you. So the, the other things that uh, the two can explain the telephone call, yep. and the price, stuff like that. I don't know if we need to go in the executive session, but I got a thing with um, hiring a part time uh, person for the winter and um, what that person. Yeah, it's on the agenda for the 18th. It's, it's for the, yes, for the winter. We met, the met with right. Michael. Yeah. Oh, you did? Oh, good. Yeah, we worked it out for you. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then the GPS on the trucks. On the 18th. That's on the 18th. Yeah. Okay. I guess we're good. And it's an old mic question. Okay. Right. One little quick oh. thing. Try with all this stuff going on. <laughs> I'm still trying to schedule a vacation before for Thanksgiving, so <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do that. But I, Thank you, I want to work. With, I want to work with Susan to figure out okay. the mechanics of that. Okay, right? we'll do it. We'll Things it. are so up in the air right now that I can't even think about all the balls. But I do. Yeah, I've got an order from 
my wife to make it happen. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> we all want her to come in here. You know what? Maybe, maybe we can get the two women together. Yeah, there you go. Right? <laughs> Both take long vacations. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, okay. We'll work okay, on okay, that. Okay. I mean, just, you've got to get your vacation taken. Yeah. Because no yeah. matter, it's going to be next week, it's going to be next week, it's going to be next week. That's right. Fine. So, Things will always run fine, just like Brian just said, because there's ways to make it run fine. Right. right. So, appreciate well, that. Or well, it doesn't. <laughs> or it doesn't. Great. <laughs> right. And that's what we should do. That's right. I, I got too want. much built up. Yeah. Exactly. Well, You'll okay. be here when you get back. That's why there's always another week. <laughs> there is. Damn it. <laughs> no, that's, no, that's a good thing. Oh, that, I'm not sure some weeks up there. Yeah. Okay. Will be adjourned. Okay. You got a second. The uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Oh. We learned a lot tonight. Oh, I didn't have. We got a nice thank you note from Ed Webster. <laughs>